Hey guys, just want to give you a little warning about this Borderlands podcast. One, we don't hold back on spoilers. We pretty much talk about every game in the series, and that includes Tales from the Borderlands. And two, it does contain some language, so just watch out for that. And uh, hope you guys enjoy. Bye. So guys, let's talk about Borderlands. Uh, right. No, no, there's only one way you have to start this podcast. Hello, Traveler! No, it's that... Greetings, Traveler. Gre- oh, jeez, I'm some Borderlands fan. Hello, I am Joseph Blanchett. I am your host. Dustin Watts is here. Howdy ho, folks. And making a long-awaited return is podcast veteran, Jess. Catch a ride! Catch a ride! Catch a ride! Um, so we haven't done a podcast in a long time. We kind of retired it for the most part. But every once in a while, we have a subject we just want to talk about. And, We've already uh, talked about it for a good 20 minutes, and <laughs> yeah. Joey has had to stop us from talking about it, so we actually have something So, like, me and Dustin have, yes, me and Dustin have been playing the uh, Borderlands games um, over the past year, and um, I reconnected with Jess, and, like, lo and behold, she's a huge fan of Borderlands. So, like, I was saying, geez, we need to record a podcast, people. Yeah, you, <laughs> no, what we you need sent to me do... that message, and I was no. like, yeah. <laughs> no, what we need to do is play a, play a game of it. Like go through it. Yeah, so now we actually need to all, like start like a, a three a three player Borderlands co-op. I would game. I'd be I'd be down. I would be a hundred percent down. I've uh yeah, because I think Joey. The only time we played it was again the time like you you helped me beat the pre sequel because I was playing it all by my lonesome. Because I have friends who kind of like Borderlands. Like they're you know I'm I'm a big grown up lady now who does you know IT project management stuff and works you know sixty hours a week. But then, I still, you know, I have great friends, but the ones that'll play Borderlands with me won't play Borderlands the way I want to play Borderlands. Like, I want to play it for, like, six days when I play it. <laughs> I don't I see... Th- yeah, that... Uh, I, Joey, me and Joey just kind of have to... Joey has to tell me, okay, that's enough, we'll start again tomorrow. Yeah, we usually play in, like, two or three hour spurts. <laughs> and, uh... yeah. Because, like, we usually couldn't start until late, and I'm like, I need to get to bed, I have work tomorrow. Yeah, I have one friend who's very, like, she'll get down, and she'll, you know, she and I will just play forever, but we're uh, we're at an awkward stage in our Borderlands relationship, where she just beat Borderlands 2 recently with my help, but what happened there was I had a, a level, it, was, it wasn't a very high level Siren, but it was the closest character to hers, I had a level 52 Siren, and she had a level 30 siren, and she was playing by herself too, so she was having a lot of trouble. So I would just come in, and she would text me and be like, hey, I need help. And I would just come in, action skill, all right, see you later. <laughs> and then, like, like, she'd just call me in when she was having trouble. And uh, But usually, like, if she and I can sit down and, and play, we will play for a very long time. I'm actually making a Moxie costume for her right now. Uh... Yeah, we definitely need to try a um, true Volt Hunter run, because I haven't even tried yeah. those yet. My, we'll my do, problem we'll is that. I overleveled my guy, Gage. Guy. I still don't know how to pronounce her name. It's Gage. It's Gage. Gage? Like a mechanic. Uh, well, I, I, am, I'm, I am still normal mode, because I did all the DLCs, and I'm like level 42. So I'm actually overleveled for true Volt Hunter. So. I, I thought you started... Over True Vault uh, Hunter. No, you continue on from where you are. It's, it okay. just resets the story. Okay. And scales up the levels. But we're getting ahead of ourselves and talking about yeah. the second game. We, we should start where it all began. So so uh, how many of you guys remember Borderlands before it's it was like the uh, comic book style game? You know, I've read about it, but here's the thing. Like, here, here's a, a special tidbit about my Borderlands uh, relationship now. I'm obsessed with Borderlands. Like, like terribly, deeply obsessed with Borderlands. But I didn't actually get into it until Borderlands 2. But not because Borderlands 2 was a good game. I actually pre-ordered Borderlands 2. And it was because... Yeah, I, I played a little bit of the first Borderlands, but I was still playing mostly on console. And... You got you guys know that me and console FPS just never really work out very well. Mm. And uh I went to I went to PAX East the uh the year that Borderlands 2 was coming out 
and the guys at the Gearbox booth were in. We don't. I remember yeah, this. they were incredibly yeah. nice. They gave her, well, Yeah, know. like I, I walked up there and I was supposed to leave. I was supposed to be on a plane in four hours. There was no way I was gonna. And the line had been capped. Like the line was four hours long. By like two minutes after the after the floor opened up, it was insane. Borderlands Two was everyone's game to play, and uh, and I was uh, I walked over there, and long story short, you know, I I sat there, and I, they had no reason to talk to me, like they had no reason to even like acknowledge me. And in fact, earlier that year, or earlier that uh, that weekend, I, and I've told this story before, you know, Microsoft completely blew me off, like just didn't even treat me as a gamer. And these guys gave me shirts. They, you know, they just really made me feel like they, you know, wanted me to enjoy the experience. And I said, you know what? That was really impressive. I'm going to, I'm going to pre-order Borderlands 2. It looks like a good game. The fact that these people were nice enough to, you know, pay me attention when they had no need to was fantastic. And I ended up being obsessed with Borderlands 2, like, insanely. So I actually played the first Borderlands all the way through like almost never. Like I I've I've never actually finished it. Like I I've I've watched other people play it all the way through. Yeah, that but... I Now, I actually got Borderlands, the first Borderlands mm-hmm. as a gift from Joey, but it was in an interesting deal. It okay. had it had both <laughs> It had the first two Bioshock games, Borderlands Game of the Year edition, and of all things, Duke Nukem Forever. <laughs> Which one of these games does not belong? You wanted the bundle for Duke Nukem. You can, you can, you can. Uh... <laughs> one of these. Oh, listen, Gearbox has made some mistakes. <laughs> Just a. <laughs> so. so, so... So the pack story I was thinking of, and I'm pretty sure this is true, where they gave all the attendees in their panels um, free copies of Borderlands 2. That was actually that code. was at PAX East. I didn't, we didn't go to their gear to the Gearbox panel because you know we didn't know that they were doing that, and I wasn't interested in Borderlands at that point. Like I, I didn't hate it. I wasn't like against it. But I was like, ah, you know, it's gonna be another one, maybe. And I had just started PC gaming, so I wasn't even sure if I liked first-person shooters yet. And. Uh, yeah, that was the year that they did that. And the next year, uh, and look, this will be a great illustration of how uh, of how far the fandom itself has come, because the next year they were doing trivia throughout the, uh, throughout the line for the Gearbox panel, which was through the doors. And yeah. they, uh, they asked a question about Handsome Jack, and somehow I was the only person in the audience that knew the answer. You could, like, like in a gearbox, in a, uh, a gearbox. Yeah, panel. like in, in the line for a gearbox panel. Now, mind you, this was like six, six or seven months maybe after Borderlands Two came out. If you yelled "Handsome Jack" in a mall right now, you'd get six people turning around, like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, Handsome Jack, right? Yeah." Like, <laughs> yeah, like I'm also a bit surprised that like the Borderlands fandom was kind of as big as it is, and like all I, I really know is like. When I do a search on Tumblr, <laughs> watch out when he searches on, on Tumblr. Oh, don't <laughs> like, go down that rabbit hole. But um, like just like when I started um, people like on like on the Steam um, like a, a discussion board. Like it's like wow, people are really into Borderlands and like yeah, like a, a cosplay pictures. This a bunch of people dressed up as the Vault Hunters and the characters, and, like, and they've got like game accurate gear. It's yeah, like people, people are really connected with these, um, with the characters in the world. Um, Cause they're, I'm, and I was like, oh, it's like there's a reason why I like this game so much. <laughs> it's like it makes the sense. The thing now. is, we we've only gotten hints of what it what is clearly a bigger world. Yeah, they keep they keep throwing out you know like extra extra vault symbols and stuff. Every at the end of every game, it's like, oh look, yeah. there's more. And I'm like, oh, my wallet can't do this. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like um, we'll discuss that kind of like what we want from the future of the mm. series. We're but, getting um, off track. I'm sorry. Yeah, so like, I wasn't really aware of this, but when they first showed off um, Borderlands in like 2008 or so, um, it had a different art style. Yeah, it wasn't cel shaded um, at all. Yeah, it looked more like kind of a generic um, brown first-person shooter. 
and um, the like the game kind of disappeared for a little bit because they were discussing like its direction and art style and stuff, and they were worried that yeah, the art style would, like would just get lost in all these other first person shooters. Like I don't think even uh, Gears of War was much of a thing around that time. It was probably around that time, and um, when it came back, it had this. Um, I was reading about it before we started recording. Like they went back to their original um, concept art drawings. They said we should make the game look more like this, so so it, it became a lot more a uh, comic booky, and they and they basically redesigned the art for the entire game almost, because um, they had like most of it done, and, and it, it it allowed them to be more over the top with their abilities and like the weird things like when you're riding a car and you jump a ramp and like you flip over and all that stuff. It would look weird if it looked realistic, but since it's a cartoon, like you gotta laugh it off. And, uh... Now, see, I remember, like, I I don't know how much of that is entirely, like, I know that there's some truth to that, but I believe on Mikey Newman's tr- Twitter, I can't find, if I can find the link, I'll give it to you later, but he actually uh, cites a couple of, uh, a couple of inspirations for Borderlands look, so, and I think one of them was a, was a short film, so I'll have to, uh, I'll have to show you guys that, too, because that's really... And, and really, it completely transformed the game because it's like I can't I can't imagine Borderlands without cell shading at this point. Yeah. Well, I mean, I have to kind of turn it off because my computer is kind of a potato. But you know, like I was reading it from a um, from a a panel they did like at a GDC or something. Like oh, that. okay, talking cool. about like the art style change. Cool, so, yeah. that's coming from them. Uh, I've just I I don't really like you. I it, it, this is sad and probably not something I should I should just you know, throw out there, but usually I just don't ask questions. The second they say Borderlands, I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's good. (laughs) Yes, we'll do that. Like, they got, they were talking about a Borderlands movie at at PAX Prime last year, and I was just like, yes, Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, we'll talk about that too, see how well it'll it'll translate. Um, Yeah, so I, kind of like you, um, I didn't play Borderlands until the second game came out. Um, and I, I got Borderlands probably in that same bundle that um, Dustin was talking about, or like it was on it was on sale on Steam. It was one of the first games I played on my on my new computer that I built, and um, I was actually pretty disappointed by it, um, all things considered. I mean, yeah, the first um, game is probably not the best in the series. It's they were still trying to kind of refine the formula and. Everything actually for some people, people lo- some people love the first game and hate the other ones, but and that's just the way of it. Part of the reason was is I haven't played a first person shooter on a console, I mean a, a PC in a really long time, so I wasn't that good at it. But um, I found the the lack of story uh, just kind of a turn off. Like I didn't have much of a drive to keep playing it because I knew the because nar- the narrative wasn't really going in interesting places, and they had all these fun characters um but they didn't really do a lot with a lot of them um so i I played through the first borderlands and like when i finished it like that didn't help much because the ending is really disappointing yeah uh Uh, the in the the last vault the like the last act of borderlands one is kind of a let down from the rest of it that's true of most games, though. Like, there, are, like, I don't know if you guys play the Tales series, but all of those games should have ended like ten hours before they do. Oh, the so. ta- well, um, the only ones I played were Symphonia and uh, Fantasia. And they both should have, like, Fantasia maybe not, but Symphonia, like, they could have just done without that entire second half of the game. Like, there's an entire mm. extra disc there of 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 nothing. Yeah, I, I, don't... I don't know. I, maybe I would say I think probably could have condensed it down to one disc, and the game would have been fine. But eh. Oh, yeah. by the way, don't get the Steam version. It's toilets. Oh, I I have the Steam version. I pre-ordered Zestiria. Anyway, so so yeah, no, like that. But <laughs> I think that you know, just getting back to the subject, you know, any most most games, especially recently, have had very very like weak second halves. Yeah. Just, just because, kind of, by that that point, you're used to it. Like you're used to the gameplay. You're used to, you know, this, that, and the other. Uh, they did it a lot better with Borderlands too, 
but yeah, like I in mm. in the first Borderlands, I kind of forgive the fact that there wasn't any, you know, like so really, I, especially in comparison I, to Borderlands Two, there was really a lot of story. I really can't forgive the boss though. That last boss was just a joke. Yeah, yeah. I mean, at least they did some like story stuff with it later on, but yeah, like. <laughs> Uh, that ending was not very good. Um, at least it was like in, a, in like a new environment and stuff, because most of the game took place in like the like the deserts and the wastelands. But at least you know you got to like a snowy area on that part. And and like I, I enjoyed it more when I replayed it uh, with a co-op because I was just kind of used to the uh, like the structure, like what makes Borderlands Borderlands. Um, but they made so many improvements in um, Borderlands Two, like just the act of collecting loot and comparing guns oh, yeah. was really tedious in the yeah. first game compared to like the second and like after we played it, i was like oh i'm finally gonna play some of these uh, dlcs that i skipped and like i got halfway through um the uh general Knox one and i was like this is all the worst stuff in borderlands like tedious backtracking too many driving sections and the loot systems are isn't good yeah Oh, you didn't even get to the vault. Oh, you didn't even get to the vault, which is the, which is the most broken part of the first Borderlands game. The um, the in the DLC. You... Yeah. In the DLC. Okay. I'm talking about oh. the vault. Well, when you say when you say vault, you I don't mean, mean the, like uh... the. Please specify vaults because. <laughs> oh, good point. Yeah, I meant uh the uh, Atlas vault. It's the secret the armory, armory vault. of General Knox. Yeah. And like I, and like I wanted to play the uh, Claptrap DLC because it looked funny because you know Claptrap. But I was like, man, I do not want to deal with Borderlands One <laughs> at the moment. See, I've I've read about and like that that was a part of the gameplay I watched a lot of was the gameplay for the Zombie Island of Doctor Ned, and I thought that was fantastic. Like it, yeah, it wasn't, um, you know. I, I, we played yeah, through we played that. Through Dr. Yeah. Ned, and I actually played through all the other DLCs. Um, General Knox, yeah, it, it's kind of the condensed worst part of the first game, but it's still fun. I, I, I mean, that would have been fine if it wasn't for, like, riding five minutes yeah. down the highway. I like the driving, though. <laughs> I'm great. Yeah, you're really good at it. You're really good oh, at yeah, it. Oh, yeah, I'm the best course. driver ever. I no, am but, not. <laughs> um, Jess, I don't know if this comes through, but that was complete sarcasm. <laughs> I lost. There were some times when, when playing the on the pre sequel, like one of the moon buggies, where he would just and like I did this too sometimes, but we were just like we would just drive off a cliff, and I would just go, "Yeah, you're really good at this game." <laughs> I've really actually good. gotten really good at jumping off the buggy before it hits the bottom. <laughs> See, I actually have a, a a system set up with my friend. Ashley lets me drive. Ashley always lets me drive because I I know the the Borderlands Two map like the back of my hand. However, sometimes, sometimes I mess up, <laughs> and sometimes I drive us off a cliff, and now any time that happens, even if it's completely on accident and I just, you know, happen to, to do it, uh, any, any money that she loses in the new U, <laughs> her new U charge, I have to then give to her. Like, she's, she's like, no, no, give me that money back. I trusted you. You pay the, so you get to pay the new U price twice. Yep, I get to pay the friend tax. We should have. We should have. Oh that. well, I, honestly, I always had more money than you, anyways. <laughs> yup. <laughs> this is getting ahead a little bit, but um, I played the the DLC for uh, the pre sequel, and by the end of it, I had like six hundred dollars because I died so oh, much. Oh no. <laughs> Yeah. I unfortunately he's I don't have the DLC for that, that so we couldn't do it co-op. Mm -hmm. And I'm not well, paying I do. And the season pass is more than the game itself and I'm like, "No. Bro, when they go on sale, they're like $2. I'll get it for <laughs> yeah. you. Like I, I will happily get it for you so you don't have to worry about it. Like for real, the 
that and that's another thing that's just great about Borderlands at this point. It's just accessible. Like the yeah. games are not that old, but no. you know, like I I, can't, I, can't, I I still can't buy like Far Cry Four because it never drops below sixty. And I'm sorry, I'm a cheap ass. Like I'm just not yeah, gonna I mean, pay sixty dollars for a game at this point. Steam has ruined me. Every time a Steam sale happens, I pay like thirty dollars at yeah, the least. most. I mean, like even even the pre sequel, which um is less than two years old at this point, I got for like. Twenty-five dollars. I think. Or something. What? What was it? I paid. Or didn't? Didn't you? I think you got it for me. Actually, you got the pre-sequel for me. Yeah, it was like fifteen dollars. Got it, like during the Christmas yeah. sale. I and um. I ended up buying Borderlands Two myself and just and all the DLC. Mm-hmm. You know, I didn't buy the cosmetic DLC because that's kind of ridiculous. Oh, I bought the hell out of that DLC. <laughs> uh, that's such the, a consumer. The cosmetic DLC has never been on sale. I'm I've checked. I, I it's it's never been on the de- it's never been on sale, but I have definitely spent actual money to get new skins. So, so you you pay money to change your character's head that only other people can see. Yes, yes, I do, Joey. I pay I pay real money so that people can see me have pigtails. Okay. Well, uh, well, I paid a little bit of money so my, everyone can see me have the head of Crawler Max. So there you go, there you but, go. But I got a, but I got an area to shoot around in too, and a raid boss. So. So the uh, the first game introduces most of like the, uh, the core cast of the series. The um, most important characters, uh, Brick and Scooter. <laughs> yeah, uh, the, uh, the four main characters, Lilith. The, the siren, the Roland, the, the machine gun guy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Mordecai has a bird. Mordecai the awesome. And uh, Brick punches stuff. Uh, my siren. So, the first game I, uh, the first time I played Borderlands, I played as Roland, which is probably a mistake. <laughs> yeah. um, because I, I didn't find his, his things very interesting. You know what, though? The um, only character he... worth playing, like, I love Brick, and I liked, I liked playing as Brick. But after making my rounds, like, I didn't play with Roland because he's a paper bag. I just don't care. Um, yeah. Lilith was, like, I, someone actually argued, they were like, oh, Lilith is, you know, she's just so much better than Maya. And I'm like, what game did you play? Because we played two very different games. Like, Lilith is okay, but, like, the best character to play as in that game is Mordecai. Like, he's Absolutely. Just... Right on. You're, you're preaching to the choir. Yeah, like, uh... Dustin played Mordecai, and like he was like, "Man, um, Bloodwing is just the best trait. He he can catch on fire. Oh yes, he can. All this cool he stuff. Can explode, and, and, and and like throughout the entire t- time, I was like, "Yeah, he's such a great bird. I hope nothing bad oh, happens." No. <laughs> and uh, he was like, "What? What do you mean?" He's like, "Oh, nothing. Nothing happens in this game." And, <laughs> and that and that haunted me until Borderlands Two. Oh. It's, it's, it's like, man, Bloodwing. Like, man, I hope he sticks around. You know what? That <laughs> and, uh, is. Here's the thing, Joey is evil, and I'll I'll be bringing this, and I'll be fermenting this a little bit later on, but just, we'll be coming back to this thing. I knew when I was saying it, it was like, I was kind of spoiling stuff for him, but I was like, yeah, (laughs) but like, I couldn't help myself, he was so into Bloodwing (laughs) that... I couldn't keep my, my well, mouth shut. Well, see if shut. you had, because, like, look at it this way. I was only, when I played Borderlands 2, I was like, all right, I remember Blood, Bloodwing. That's pretty cool. You know, like, hey, cool, Bloodwing's here, too. And when when Bloodwing died, I literally did not sleep. Not that. just no. died. He, he turned into a monster, and you had to shoot him. No, to no, that was so traumatizing for me. That I did not sleep. I had I, I nearly called into work the next day because I could not cope. I was so like, <laughs> yeah, my, like man, having man that was it was this series can gut punch you like none other. No, I couldn't believe it. I could not believe it. And I actually have more stories about gut punches this series has given me. Yeah, we're like we've later got, on. We've got. That's why Borderlands Two is so amazing because, like Borderlands One. I felt so indifferent to almost every, like to almost all the characters. Like I, I, I could see their potential, but I, I never thought they were very yeah, interesting. Yeah. But then two comes along and like gives them all these personalities. Like they retroactively gave all they, these characters. From hold the first hold game on, they gave everybody except Roland a personality. <laughs> I don't think that 
Bro, I don't think you could give Brolin the personality. I don't think, I don't think his psyche could handle it. Like he's just, and I can hmm. tell they tried because like they gave the dimension of oh, him and Lilith have a relationship, and all I could and, think was and, what oh, did the and, no, his Brolin's best interaction with a character is with the best character in Borderlands Two. Tiny Tina. Tiny Tina is in fact. Well, I don't know. Scooter's still in that game. Like Scooter and Brick were in that game. Like the that's the Holy Trinity. Like Tiny Tina, Brick, and Scooter. Like... Yeah. Well, let's finish up up on the first game here. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I played as Brick, um, which I really liked because I can go into Berserker Rage and punch people to their heads. That's too. my favorite thing to do. Which <laughs> that was always fun. It's like what like when I first got that ability, I was like. Why, why didn't I play as Brick the first time? I would have, like, had an entirely different outlook <laughs> Borderlands. And see, that's another thing that's really just fantastic about the Borderlands series as a whole. It's not just, like, a first-person shooter for one type of, of, of gamer. Like, it, Brick is a completely different experience from Lilith. Mordecai is a completely different experience from both of them. And, and, Roland, mm-hmm. and Roland's a first-person shooter. Roland is a paper bag. And... <laughs> Like, it's it's just so, it's and it's so awesome, because even, you know, like, with, because in Borderlands 2, some of, like, obviously the skills were very different, but the gameplay was kind of generalized. Like, you could, if you were played as Zero, you didn't have to play with a sniper rifle. It was more fun if you did, you had more perks if you did, but if you wanted to sit there with machine, with SMGs all day, whatever, rocket launcher, sure, go ahead and do it. But the game is so, like, it's so versatile that... Anyone can play it. I'm, I, there, there is an actual word for it. I've heard the term, and I can't remember it, so I'm just gonna shut up. But yeah, I mean, uh, you could, you could, you. That's the thing. No matter what character you played, you could play it however you wanted. Unless you're, so unless you're game... Roland, in oh, which sorry. case you play it as a paper bag. Yep, Roland's a paper bag. You heard it here, first America. Roland is a paper bag. He he had a uh, skill that made his turret heal people. I missed yeah. that. I missed that <laughs> healing turret. Uh, so the first so game he. introduced some characters. <laughs> uh, the first game had uh, introduced some characters like Angel, who um, you never got a full story with her in the first game. Uh, you weren't sure, like you weren't sure what she was in the first game. Yeah, and then there. Were, I mean, you. Well, in the DLC, you had General Knox, which. What's me? General Knox was a, probably the most underrated character in Bo- the original Borderlands, because he was the eternal straight man to the entire planet of Pandora, and and the probably the whole galaxy. Because you could tell he had just had enough of everyone, and it was hilarious. Yeah. I don't remember much about him because I only played through part of. That he DLC. was probably the his, just his commentary over everything was probably the best part of the DLC. And of course, there's Claptrap, everyone's favorite yeah. lovable character. He's amazing. You stay off a of Claptrap, like he's he's like that that shitty cousin that no one really wants to hang out with, but he's always there, and he's never done anything like bad. But you just don't want to be around him. But you don't, you don't want to leave him alone. Like that's, you know, like just this kid. He, that, that's to me. That's what Claptrap is. Like he's the guy. He's just the character you love to hate, but hate to love. See, I don't hate Claptrap. Like I, again, it's it's that cousin. Like it's it's that relative you don't hate, you don't dislike necessarily. You just don't want to be around them. But they're always around, and you feel bad if you're not tr- there. Tr- they just try so hard. Yeah, you know, like they. It's it's like when you know when a relative comes up and is like, yeah. So how about those sports games you like to play? How's the how's <laughs> the new Walkman? And you're just like, oh my god, please stop talking. But they're not doing anything I wrong just, to you. <laughs> I just invented a new dance. Want to see? Oomch, 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 oomch. Yeah. See, like, I. I don't know how to tell that person that I don't want to be around them. So for me, that's what Claptrap is. It's a character I I don't want to tell that I that I don't want to be around you. Now, when you say Claptrap, are you talking about 
the entire like all the clap traps or like the main clap trap? Our our good pal, you know the the one the the, the last the... clap trap the last we'll call him. <laughs> uh, I think everybody. Call, I think he's the Firestone Claptrap, because that's the one that was kind of the that's kind of the iconic cl- claptrap to the series. We, we can in, call um, him the Swearing Claptrap too, I guess. In uh, the uh, Telltale um, poker game, he's one of the players. I love that. No, yeah, he that. hits on Glados. I mean, like I really just <laughs> again, he's that ki- uh, He's just I love that poor little bastard. Like he, he's. We have, we have we have characters like uh, Doctor Zed and Tannis and BK Baja Doctor... or a uh, TK Baja. Yeah. T TK. Yeah. And um Scooter. Scooter. Bad. He's uh, always hidden on his cousins. It's kind of creepy, know. even he admits it. <laughs> let, let, let's look at the options on Pandora first, though. I mean, like we <laughs> we know it's it's a redneck joke. Like that's okay. Like it's a redneck joke, whatever. But look like. Uh, what options all... do you have on Pandora? Seriously. Like there, there's all of six women, and and the reason there are only six women left, and the reason those women are left, are because they could crush your genitals with a single thought. <laughs> like there's that those women are so incredibly strong. Yeah, I would just hit on my cousin too. Like there's really no one else to hit on. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So like when I discovered that. Mikey Newman, who I was a fan of in like different podcasts and stuff, was the voice of Scooter in a, in a ride on Borderlands. Kind of blew my mind because <laughs> like I didn't know that when I first came like a, a fan. Yeah, of Mikey him. Newman's fantastic. He's uh, I could I could talk. We could make an entire podcast about me talking about Mikey <laughs> Newman, which is probably weird and probably not something I should say. And like like once I like I um I took his humor style that he has in his podcast and stuff. And then, like, I looked back at Borderlands, especially Scooter. I was like, oh, man, he probably just riffed all that stuff, like, on the spot. Like, the way he talks and all that. Yeah. Um, and we have uh, Marcus. He likes guns. No, he likes selling guns. He likes selling guns. He's probably pretty indifferent to, to, to the guns yeah. themselves. He is. And uh, there was some kind of bad guy in Borderlands 1. I don't remember anything about her. Oh, yeah, coming down steel. Commandant Steel. Okay. Oh, yeah. yes, Commandant Steel. Who was the, like, the bad guy corporation? Atlas. Do you remember? Yeah. No, um, Atlas is two. No, Atlas is one. <laughs> Joey, what okay. game did you play? Hyperion is the bad one in two. Atlas. Okay, yeah, I got um, right. Atlas. No, Atlas was a, a General Knox, wasn't it? Yes. Wasn't it Doll? I don't remember. Wow. No, no one's going to want to listen to this. They're going to hear no. this part and be like, bye. No, at, no, General Knox was Atlas. Because they had yeah. sent an expeditionary force to see what the hell was going on on Pandora. Yeah. Yeah, it, was, it probably was at all. Because they kind of did the same thing that they did on the moon. Where they just went there, stripped on the place. And no, that's Doll. That, that's what I said. Doll's the one who did the moon. So it's at. Yeah. Hold on. Let, let's get. Let's get our. Let's get our mega corporations. <laughs> I think. I, 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 um, I think it was Doll in the first no. game. In the you, know, you know who could tell us? Google. I bet Google could fucking okay. tell us. Just it's a at. No, it's Atlas in the first game. No, Atlas was just General no. Knox. I, I, no, I'm no, almost no. positive. No, no, General Knox was the DLC. Commandant yeah. Steel, hold on, let me look up Commandant Steel. Cause she, I, she <laughs> would tell me, I can't believe I have to look this up, but you guys have me questioning everything. Just a moment. Uh, no, it's the Crimson Lance. The Crimson Lance was our problem. The Crim- yeah, Crimson Lance was Atlas, yeah. right? Yeah, so Crimson Lance was Atlas, and then Doll, like like we were saying, that's the pre-sequel, and then Hyperion is Borderlands 2. And, the, and Tails. And the pre-sequel. Yeah, they're... Yeah, Hyperion's kind of the... Yeah, book. Hyperion is the overarching douche, and then we've got, like, Atlas, which is the, you know, like, the under-douche, and then you've got all the other gun companies who I'm sure will end up being douchey. Like, well, except not... Torque. Well, except Torque, because they, well, they, they want to do is make things explode. Ex- that's true. That's true. Like, that's that's as chaotic neutral as you can get. But, uh, 
But yeah, and then you've got Dahl, which did Dahl really ever do anything bad? Like, well, they caused the well, they caused the crackening on the uh, on Elvis. Well, they they did cause the crackening, but like they didn't, you know, run out there and go, "Oh, we're gonna kill all the bandits." They just kind of said, "We're gonna mine on this moon, and no one's gonna stop us." Oh shit! And then, and then when <laughs> things went, and then when things went south, they bailed. Exactly, just like any other, you know, God-fearing corporation would do. Just get the hell out of there. Yeah. But. So the vault hunters find the vault. There's a monster inside. <laughs> they shoot its tentacles, and they, yep. they win. That's end of one. game. That's, end of game. And then there's the DLC with Nox and Doctor Z. Um, and, and there was a, a Moxie one. Um, yeah. Which I think was a, a battle. Yeah, Moxie turned out one. to be pretty popular. So. I thought she got introduced in the uh, General Nox, but the Underdome was before yeah. that. Um. The Underdome was our. It, well, it was a thinly veiled excuse to kill enemies. Yeah. I'll take an excuse to kill enemies. Like, yeah. I mean, that's basically like it. When you look at at the at the Torg DLC, that's kind of what they did there too. Just like, yeah. I mean, yeah, like they had other stuff. You had. Do they have a little bit more of a story? Yeah, they had more one? story, but you know, in the end, you ended up in a battle arena. Like that's where you ended up. So yeah. like yeah. that's you know, yeah. Each each game has one of those battle arena yeah. ones, and. uh it seems to fit more in the Borderlands games. Like, I know the first Mass Effect has a Battle Arena DLC. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, I didn't touch that. Uh, just, uh, uh, okay, so Borderlands 2. Borderlands 2. I was a bit hesitant with this one, because as, as, as I said, I played Borderlands was kind of indifferent to it, for the most part. Like, I enjoyed... No, I, I enjoyed it. Like, I thought the... Um, like, the, I thought the setting was cool. I liked the... Um, I, I like the shooting, um, and I kept hearing that two put a lot more um, a character and uh, like a story into it. So you know, I picked that one up, and I was like hooked almost immediately on this one. Yeah, yeah. Borderlands, Borderlands Two is just honestly the better game, but is is a vast improvement over the first one. Yeah, it's incredible because like picking, it's night and day, and you can tell that they worked hard on it. You know, obviously they worked hard on Borderlands One, and Borderlands One was their first, you know, real, real shot at at this that you know was any any good. Sorry guys, like <laughs> I love Gearbox, but they know, they know, they know. <laughs> they, not they, per- they 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 have not made pure shining gems all the time. Yeah, like they know. But like, I mean, like just just the moment when you picked up a gun and like you can compare it on the same screen yeah. as the one you're looking it's like, at. What? No. It's like it blew my mind. And like, did the first game have like the hold button to pick up all items thing, or whatever, or like running over to pick up money? Because I don't no. think it had that. Nope. <laughs> you had to pick it all up individually, if I remember correctly. Yeah. So like this fact, you can run over money and ammo. I feel like. Like, this... every time I talk about Borderlands 1, I feel like there's going to be some, you know, Roland super fan who's going to be, like, typing furiously away at me. Like, I'm going to get an email. It's just like, listen here, ma'am. Let me tell you about Roland. Like, it's that's all it's going to be. And But, I mean, even they, even in their heart of hearts, the A y'all know. Paper bag. I hope they know paper bag. But... He keeps, keeps showing up, though. Yeah. They just feel the need to bring him back. <laughs> I will admit though, I will admit though, he was a bit of a chuckle in the Tiny Tina DLC, but we'll get to that. Hmm. Yeah. Um, introduced a bunch of new Vault Hunters. They had Maya, who's another Siren. Much, much more fun to play than Lilith. Like yeah. I really, in the end, play the the Vault Hunters in two were just amazing. Like every yeah. single one of well, them what... was amazing. Well, like, I never played Lilith in the first one. Like, what was her, what was her she deal? Was, it was like stealth. It was, it wasn't as action based as Maya was. Like, oh. she's a, she's sneaky, sneaky. Yeah. Does stealth work in a Borderlands game? Yeah, like game? it was yeah. fun. You know, like, oh yeah, you explode hmm. when you, you know, go visible again. Like, I don't give a, okay. like, just let me. Like, the second I, I, I figured out I could hold things, like just hold something in place and shoot it for longer. I was like, yes, this is amazing. Yeah, like. Uh... Oh, I played Maya in a my second playthrough. Um, and like just the fact that you could like crowd control powerful enemies and then heal off them. Just 
was like a really yeah. cool thing. Yeah, and once I realized all of the status effects I could throw in there, I was like, I am a god! I am unstoppable! <laughs> um, then we have Axton. Who um, is very much not a paper bag. Yeah. Who I don't think I even really heard talk until he showed up in one of the pre-sequel DLCs. He's... Um, he's kind of an... He's kind of the jack of all trades character. He can pretty much fill in any role he want. When I saw his design, like amidst all these other characters, I just thought he just looks like a just like an army guy. Roland 2.0. Uh, you know. he's a he's a bit more of a screw up than Roland was. Yeah, like he's got a lot of interesting character traits. I've only like I I didn't play much of him. I really like it's just not my style of play. But, uh, and it was the same with Roland, like, it wasn't my style of play. Um, and I didn't even really make the, you know, the uh, decision that Roland was such a, you know, eh, character until 2, where you do have Axton. Axton had, you know, he has personality. He's very, he's, he's darker, he's a little more, like, he's... I don't want to say flamboyant, because he's not necessarily flamboyant. He's just more extroverted, I guess would be the best way to say it. He's a bit more attached to his turret than Roland was. Yeah, yeah. Appar- apparently, um, he was originally a bisexual character, but they um, but they changed it because they were afraid people wouldn't want to play as a guy who likes guys. See, that's something that I actually... Uh... <laughs> Oh, you guys are going to hear about it from me now. Because you know who else we need to talk about? Handsome Jack. So, uh, so I don't let, know. Let, 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 let's, get, let's get through the Bolt Hunters first. <laughs> then we get okay, to the... Okay, so the, you guys are going to hear about sexuality and borderlands from me. Just so you know. <laughs> Tumblr. We're yeah. going to hear about Tumblr. <laughs> we're going to hear we're less, less about Tumblr. And more, oh, okay, so maybe a little bit about Tumblr. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, then we have Zero who uh, I assume is kind of a sniper Yeah, class. he's he's basically the sniper. Like he has a lot of sniper uh like there there a lot of his skills are sniping based. Like you can yeah. get a lot of really 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 sweet bonuses. Like basically mean shields and armor mean nothing. Um then we have Salvador who I the gun. Um, I think his his skill is like he dual wields guns. And that's yeah. pretty amazing. That's pr- it's it's yeah. pretty great. My favorite that... part about playing as Salvador is that you are indeed like your 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 eye level is a completely different level than the rest of your party. So like they'll be like, oh look at that, and I'm like, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, they actually adjust the v- viewpoint down, which is which they actually did with Claptrap in the pre sequel too, which was a nice touch. Yeah. I was about to ask if you do. If they did that with um, class yeah, characters. and it's just so charming that they do because any in any other FPS I played, it didn't matter what height your character was. It's just like, yep, you're still on the same level, but having that that compensation that, was beautiful. Because I mean, you you are noticeably have a lower viewpoint than if clap trap. Then we have two DLC characters. Um, we have Gage, which is who I played as the first, and that's who I played through. <clears throat> Gage I mean, is bro- Gage is broken. Gage the kill stealer. I cannot like that's that's the friendship ruiner for me in Borderlands too. Like I've I have a friend who plays as Gage and I and he no he, it's I, not Gage may not be Gage isn't the kill stealer. Death Trap is the kill stealer. Yeah, and every time I'm fighting for my life, I'm like, all right, this guy's right in front of me, and I'm gonna get him, and I'm about to shoot him dead, and De- Death Trap comes through like fuck, nope. And just slaps that psycho down, and then I have to pay for that new Yuffie. <laughs> like, it's... Oh, I can't... Gage is a fantastic character if you're playing solo. Like, I feel like she's fantastic yeah. to play as solo, but every time one of my friends is like, oh, I'm going to play Gage when we play Borderlands, I'm like, no, you're not. Because we're not going to be um, friends if you do that. I remember at the very end of the game, when you shoot Handsome Jack, um... Death Trap like walks out and just... slaps him. Yeah, like, I wanted Dustin to see, like, the scar on Handsome Jack's face, but, like, the second the prompt came up, Death Trap went over there and went, and <laughs> slapped him to death. Bye. Yeah. I was like, oh. <laughs> and, like, throughout the entire, like, thing at the end, like, these bats who are probably out of, um, aggro range, um, but, like, Death Trap just kept shooting them out of the sky throughout the entire ending. Yeah. Cool. And 
and and there's like ammo was just like lying everywhere and yeah it was it was and amazing then we have uh craig Krieg. The, um, of the psycho Krieg. Krieg okay. was um oh. Craig yeah. is probably the funnest character to play as, if only for his dialogue. Now, see, I actually have a Krieg story, because uh, PAX East, again, this was the panel where, I, again, some somehow, you know, people didn't know everything about Handsome Jack, which now, yeah, like I said, you just have to shout Handsome Jack in a mall, and you're going to find six people who want to talk to you about him. Uh, that was at PAX East, they announced the Krieg DLC, and I was like, wow, that's fantastic. I'm definitely going to buy that when it comes out. And Randy Pitchford, the sweet benevolent god that he is, comes out and goes, guess what, guys? You're not going to buy it. Because we're giving it to you. And I was like, ah, oh, god is real. God is real and he's standing in front of me. So, <laughs> so is, he like a, is he like a melee character? Because he has that big Yeah, wrench, right? yeah, no, it's, it's like, yeah, you can use guns, but. Why like, would you? Exactly. Like, you, oh. Gage is, uh, Krieg is the character. You get up in the face of everyone, and then they have a very unhappy day. Yeah, and his the fight for your life skill. Oh my god, I, I'm less mad whenever Gage player still keels from. I don't know why I said still keels, <laughs> still keels. <laughs> kill steal from me like if you, if you steal a kill from me as gage when i'm playing as krieg it's okay i'm throwing dynamite at things i'm all right yeah <laughs> they also added a lot more um in this game it's mostly like uh, echo files of like all the characters oh my god yeah so you, just you got to you got to learn more about them so they're not just like like faceless yeah, like, heroes like they were in the hey first we game. showed up on a bus yeah <laughs> um and they started doing kind of like little animated um, story stuff later on, like uh, like the uh, Krieg um, intro video on their YouTube page. It's like just a, like a little story of him and, and a bunch of psychos like attacking uh, Maya, but he he stops because he's like, oh, this is the most beautiful woman in the entire universe. I need to say something. I need to say something to her so she knows how I feel. He just yells, "Meat bicycles!" I am the conductor <laughs> of the poop train. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I remember that because I just I was so absolutely in love with that, and and it's not that he was attacking her; he was trying to warn her of another attack. That's right. But That's like, right, yeah. just that. And he finally broke through and said, "Look out, pretty lady." Oh, that was so beautiful. That was so beautiful. I want to see more of Krieg. I'm not even joking. Like, listen, if Borderlands Three comes around, just please, 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 God. Let it be nothing but Brick and Krieg taking you places. Because well, I, I would be the happiest and play, lady. And you playing as Tiny Tina. Yo, yo, no, that's that's the Holy Trinity right there. I know I, I said Holy Trinity before, but let's be real. Like, if if Tiny Tina, Krieg, and Brick went somewhere together, like, just as Vault Hunters, it's like, hey, let's go find a vault. Uh, one, they'd probably never find the vault because there's, you know, half a brain between the three of them. And two, but, there wouldn't be a place after they were through. Exactly. No, like it would be, it'd be the biggest, the biggest wreck in the entire world. But it would be the most fun I've ever had. <laughs> like, I would, I would just love it. That if that was all, like if all Borderlands Three was was just a four-hour video of of Tiny Tina, Brick, and Krieg trying to find a vault because they were bored. I'd be okay. Game of the year. Like, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Gearbox. You did it again. Uh, they have some new characters here, like Sir Hammerlock. Sir. Bless you, Joey. Just bless you, because you keep trying to get us back on track. Like, you're like, all right, guys. <laughs> I get it. You're excited, but we have an agenda. What's it? <laughs> we need to talk about the hypothetical Borderlands 3 where Tiny Tina rides on brick and Krieg is riding on brick oh too. my god no no a totem would be amazing <laughs> like a, a punch explosion totem with torg at the bottom yes yeah that would that would be the the most awesome thing ever no like the I'm, world is not ready for that much awesome no i'm getting misty eyed that's inspiring i can't even handle that but anyway back to actually back to sir hammerlock because this is good 
uh, Sir Hammerlock, I, I know that, you know, we were talking before about Axton, possibly. Uh, Axton is canon bisexual, uh, implied. Yeah. It's, you know, like, it's yeah. implied a couple times. Well, apparently it was, like, in the game at one point, but they... Yeah, uh, and that's actually been a big fight. There's a... Mikey Newman actually wrote a, a article for the Mary Sue back a few months ago, and I can give you guys the link to that. Uh, I think I read that. On one. asexuality, and he spoke at length about the fight that the writers especially have to make sure that all sexualities are represented in the Borderlands universe. Yeah. Which is fantastic, and they actually succeeded in a lot of places in uh, in Borderlands 2, and one of them was uh, was in Sir Hammerlock, because he's gay. Like, there, I don't remember where they say it, but it's he's canon gay. Every, it's... I mean, he just mentions that, like, he has some ex-boyfriends... Yeah. Like I mean, they don't place. make a big deal out of it. He just is. Yeah. And that's the thing. That's the thing I like about the Borderlands universe as a whole. Like, there is... I, re I remember... Uh, I won't I won't get too in, into it on Tumblr, but I remember someone, you know, shouting, Oh, Gearbox is homophobic because, you know, this person or that person isn't also gay. And I'm like, dude, you, there's so many kids. Like, I don't know what Pandora you're on, but, but there, there, there is there's... so much gay here. <laughs> Well, it seems like Pandora, like, like two thirds of the couple are, like, homosexual. Yeah. It seems like. Yeah, they're either lesbians or homosexuals, and well, I, I, mean, I love well, that. Well, I mean, Athena's Athena. Yeah, yeah. That, well, she's she's the most. I mean, like, it, the most men there's the Mechos when you go to the um, to like the like the um like the animal sanctuary place, where like these characters just kind of mention their husbands and wives, you know, when they're when they're men and women, and um. Like, I didn't have a problem with it, but I was like, man, it just seems like every time they have a relationship in this game, it's like, surprise, they're gay. <laughs> um, yeah, but see, the thing, and again, the thing I like, I think maybe, you know, they they make a couple of, like, underhanded jokes about it, but it's, it's you know, it's in line for the characters. But whenever you see sexuality in Borderlands, especially, again, in Borderlands 2, Tales from the Borderlands, wherever, you know, this, it and Borderlands the pre-sequel... It's not treated as, whoa, they're gay, or like, whoa, look, guys, we put a gay character in. Aren't you happy with us? I, I did think that um, Springs in the pre-sequel, like, she brings up the fact that she's not into guys, like, a million times. Well, that's, well, that's Janie, though, like. but that's, that's she, she, just Janie's Janie. Kinda, Janie's kind of broken, let's be honest. Yeah, Janie is, is extroverted enough to say that, because I know gay people who do the same thing. They're like, hey, did you know I'm gay? And I'm like, yeah, I've known you for seven years. Like I know, <laughs> I was there, but uh, but no, I yeah, have like the they, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but no, the the thing that I love is that these characters will bring it up; they'll say it. But none of the other characters go, "Oh my god, I can't believe you," you know. Well, this, I, this is this is like eight hundred years in the future, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, so hopefully, I, I, I'm glad to see <laughs> that eight hundred years in the fu future we're finally progressing. Yeah. But yeah, that's but that's something I absolutely love about Pandora is that it doesn't matter what you are, what you look like, what it just ma it just matters if you have the money to buy the guns. If you can buy the guns um, and I shoot I, something, you're good. I think I read a thing where one of the developers said that uh, Maya is is yep. asexual. Yeah, I think I read that's that. another so, one that's been confirmed. Which is just another thing because like obviously there's nothing in the game Engage. that implies that. Gage. I don't know why I think it. Robosexual. No, no, oh, no, she Obviously. Like, well, I, well, I know she likes, uh, I know she, uh, she had hots for Hammerlock because she brought it up in the, one of the Headhunter DLCs. Well, who wouldn't? No. Yeah, Honestly. let's be real. Who wouldn't have the hots for Hammerlock? I mean, you, really. You see those mutton chops, yeah. man? Those are the finest mutton chops on, on Pandora. And Absolutely. I've seen some mutton chops on Pandora. Borderlands 2 also opened up with, like, with, like, a, a snow area. And it's like, oh, thank God. <laughs> it's not a brown desert. Actually, you didn't see that yeah. many brown deserts in Borderlands 2. I'll tell you what, though. If I had to hear the Three Horns Divide soundtrack one more time, like, James and I, my boyfriend and I were playing it together with another friend, and we were playing Borderlands 2, and we were going through Three Horns Divide, and, like, every couple of seconds, one of them would go, wow, 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 just because. Actually, <laughs> actually, I ended up, uh, when I was playing Axton just recently, mm -hmm. I ended up skipping Three Horns Divide almost completely. Huh. Yeah. Uh, 
Nah. I don't know how it happened, but I ended up, I was just randomly popping through other people's games, just leveling up, and I was like, oh, apparently I skipped a horn to the bide. Okay, cool. I'm I'm happy with that. I think it's cool music, but I, I think I agree that the, that area of the game is probably my least See, favorite. See, some of the Borderlands, especially in Borderlands 2, like, some of the soundtrack is fantastic, but I think that's the only place where Borderlands 2 really lacks. Like, it's just yeah. so... The the music... But a lot of the problem, too, is that you have places like the Horns Divide where the map is just so massive. What You know, what? how do you write music to go with a map that's that big? You know, like, especially for a first-person shooter, you can't, you know... I don't know. I don't know. It just didn't, didn't, the, the soundtrack didn't click with me entirely in a lot of the places, but in the places it did, it was like, oh my god, no, this is amazing. Why have I ever listened to anything but this? But, I think, I, I think yeah. the pre-sequel actually had a pretty cool soundtrack, too. Yeah, the pre-sequel had a pretty neat soundtrack. Um. You remember the, the music in the, um, in the, in the, in the, um, arena place, Dustin? Uh, which one? It, like... Um, it was like in the middle of the game. There's, there's this, this bigger like battle arena place where we spent a few levels, but it had that really cool soundtrack. Oh yeah, that's pretty cool yeah. stuff. Uh, some other characters we have Ellie, um, who is Scooter's sister, and is got the weirdest body shape up. In hey, all... hey, no, I hey. mean not in a bad way. It's just it's how she's modeled that just kind of. I'm not saying there's wrong with it. it's just modeled weird yeah see one of my favorite things actually about ellie's body shape because like she's you know she's very she's almost shaped like a spoon where like her her feet her her legs are kind of small but then like the rest of her body is not i loved that not because you know to me it didn't feel like it was modeled weird but only because you know how how many first person shooter games or games in general, really, do you see a, a woman with that shape? Not only, you know, as a prominent character in the game, but as a capable and confident character. Like, usually it's the fat joke. I'm playing through uh, through another game. I'm playing through Persona 4 right now. And they just made the most offensive fat joke in the middle of it. Like, Well, I mean, it's a, it's a JRPG. It's... Yeah, you know, but I mean, that that's... That, but that's something i could have found in any other us rpg to, though you know like any yeah. th- it's it's not something that's just common in japanese games it's common in a lot of games where you know if you don't have uh you know the right the right proportions Body. you're not capable of being a you know a badass and ellie and this is actually brandy pitchford at, at one of the pax panels that i attended said that his favorite character in Borderlands 2 and the most beautiful character in Borderlands 2 was Ellie because she didn't look anything like any of the other characters. And, and, and she was happy with herself. Yeah, she rocked it. There was, and there, you never felt like it was a joke. You never felt like, you know, oh my god, this disgusting thing doesn't know what she looks like. No. I, I've never looked at Ellie and said, wow, no, she's very weird. It's, I looked at her and went, holy shit, I wish I could be Ellie. And I love that when I when I see that in any character, especially yeah. in a female character that is, and especially in a character like Ellie, it's like yes, that we we've progressed, we've made something amazing here. And that was true of a lot of characters in, in Borderlands too. There's another one here on your on your list, which I mean, obviously we're moving on to to Tiny Tina. Well, well, one thing about um Ellie, like, wasn't one of her quests to collect like hood hood or, hood ornaments that was kind of modeled after, and like the bandits were using it as like a you know, like a like a sign of power of how of how like powerful they were. Or they were like using that. they were using it to make fun of her, and she thought they were badass, so she wanted us to bring oh, them right. back. She was like, "Oh, I need those." Yeah, <laughs> they were making fun of her, and she was like, "Oh hell no, I want those myself." Screw yeah, you guys. Like, she didn't even her feelings oh. weren't even hurt. She was just like, "Oh my god, those are amazing. <laughs> Give me one." So like, I think they actually had this in the previous game and in, in one of the DLCs, but you find out that um, Scooter and Ellie. Mom is a uh, yeah, yeah. That's the first. And like she has an entire story how she was like the clan mother of this one tribe, and like um Ellie was in line to be the next like the next one, and like Moxie knew how horrible it was, so that's why like she. That's why they have that's. She uh, got out of there and uh, they, took her kids. Yeah, that's with why her. they had that heart shape marked on their um. Uh, uh, Boobs. Yeah. <laughs> 
Oh, that wasn't like no, a tattoo. No, that's a uh, branding mark. Okay. Um, but actually, and they and they they speak to some length about that in the uh, the Zafford and Honduk, uh the Clan War, um, side quest. But they yeah. they speak a lot about that and just the relationship that Ellie, because you know even in Moxie doing that, Ellie has kind of you know like then rebelled against her and said, you know what, no, I'm not going to be anything like you. I'm going to do this. Whatever, stop me. Speaking of Moxie, like, what do you think of her persona? Moxie for me was actually initially a disappointment. Like, I I don't dislike her anymore, but for a but, long time I just kind of felt like she was like I, I get what they were trying to do, you know, like here's the sexy character who, you know, like it it was a joke about sexy characters. Like that's what Moxie was. Except, but, but then you find out that she's probably one of the most tech inclined people on the planet. Not only that, like really, not only that. Like there was part of me that you know felt even at, at, during Borderlands Two, I was like, you know, in, in the side quests, they make it seem like Moxie's a very competent character, and I like that. But that's not prominent enough in the main game. Like any time you you talk to her in the main game, it's just again, you know, like she's the she's the sexy character joke. She you know has she speaks an innuendo and it's just you know the sultry. She's the sultry character, yeah. and so for I remember in Borderlands Two being like, uh, I don't know, I don't I don't hate her, but I don't love her because <laughs> it it just it felt. It felt like they put too much of the the sexy joke in front of her being a capable character. In the pre-sequel, the pre-sequel changed my mind entirely. I was like, okay, no, great, she's a fantastic character. But in two, I felt like, eh, like she wasn't she wasn't where I wanted her to be yet. Uh, yeah, you actually get to see a bit of the real Moxie in the pre-sequel. Yeah, and and I think that the real Moxie is fantastic. Like the real, like just, and you see a little bit of her, and that's what made me go, okay, well maybe this character isn't, you know, just. A terrible joke. Uh, no, that that's actually the joke is that she uses her she uses her sexiness like Mar- actually Marcus himself actually brings this up in one of the Headhunter DLCs mm-hmm. as he's actually talking about Moxie being his ex-wife and how she was actually saying that it was something along the lines of make him make him. Uh, What's the word? Make them look at you different, and they'll underestimate you. So that's why Marcus looks fat, and why Moxie has that has the whole vamp thing going on. Yeah, it it puts people on the other foot. Exactly. No, no, but that that was something that kind of you know. But again, you had to go through a DLC to find that. You, yeah. you it wasn't something that they just made apparent with her. It's it was something that was kind of like oh you know like if you if you tried hard enough you found out about her. And and I get that too because yeah, obviously that's not something you should be able to easily find out from this character. She's tried very hard to make the persona that she has. Yeah. But it was uh, it's still like I said I I took it and that was a mistake for me too. I took it a lot at face value whenever I played through Borderlands 2 the first time. So that's, it was. That's kind of yeah. a mistake to do with Borderlands in general. You you can't really take this game at face value mm-hmm. because it constantly takes the piss out of itself. It does, yeah, and it's it's oh, it just it was that everything about, it, and and we really we haven't talked enough about the storyline in Borderlands too. Like I, I mean, went into Borderlands two expecting, okay, this will be a fun shooter. I didn't expect to come in there and be invested in characters, and I certainly, like, we kind of skipped over. Well, we talked a little bit about Handsome Jack, but really, Handsome, Handsome Jack, Jack is probably one of the best villains. Period. Yeah, Ever. No. In all media. He is probably one of the best villains ever written. Yeah, no, he... I, I left this game just completely thrilled with the fact that I had beaten Handsome Jack. And that's that's something. Because I went into this game thinking, okay, well, this is a kind of... This is a... He's funny. Like, and I, I loved him from the moment, like, he started talking to me. The second he said something about buying a diamond pony to me, I was like, oh, oh you sweet, magnificent bastard. You're going to be my favorite character in this game. And... Hey, lo and behold, you were absolutely right. Oh, I was fantastically right. But also, like, it wasn't just, like, something, like, it, it wasn't your, you know, 
generic brooding, you know, villain with a past. It was this dude who truly and sincerely believed that he was doing the right thing. He he suffers from the problem that he believes that he is the hero of everyone's story. And he, Not he just... and just the the and one thing that I I didn't entirely expect too was also his relationship with Angel. And by the end of the game, even even that, you know, like they they presented it as, oh, you know, Angel is his daughter. But knowing Handsome Jack the way I did by the end of that game, I was like, is that even really true? Is that really his daughter, or did he manipulate well, yeah, her like too? It's, exactly. It's like when um you get to the point where you're on the path to kill her, basically, or whatever, and like uh Jack is like. Like, stay away from my daughter. You're not killing an innocent child. I was like, just wondering, it's like, how much of this is real for this character? And by the end, you're like, oh, this is 100% real. And like, you're seeing the real Jack, like at that point. Like, like, like the Jack with like, with like feelings, you yeah. know? Yeah. And that's, the, and that was something too that they handled very well. They didn't, you know, Jack's, Jack's reaction to, to loss in general seemed incredibly genuine like that his his reaction to loss in any of the games was i mean fantastically written it when his handsome jack is a villain is a tragic villain by all standards because in his mind every single person he has placed his faith and trust and has betrayed him one by one one after another See, here's and my it... favorite thing about that, though. Like, here, yeah, I, I don't disagree with what you're saying, but here, here's the thing. He's, he's only tragic in his own mind. Exactly. Because the people that hurt him are people who hurt him because they were, he was already hurting them. Like, exactly. it wasn't, it wasn't, he... you know, uh, Jack was a great guy who loved his daughter and, you know, only wanted to bring peace to this planet. That's his, that's his version of it. That's his, his, you know, perception of it. Where Angel sees it as, here's a man who's kept me locked up for 20 years. And pumped me full of toxic chemicals. Exactly. Like, it's not something that, but that, and that's just the, the most fantastic thing because... <laughs> There is, and, and we can talk about this more when we talk about Tales from the Borderlands, so I could definitely bring up Handsome Jack some more, but he's, and th- this is something that you just don't see in video games often at all. Like, I, I've seen it a few times in, in, you know, this and that, but Handsome Jack wasn't just, you know, the villain. He had a lot of different facets to him. You, and, could, you could kind of, you could kind of relate and sympathize with him. And that's what made him so scary, it's because you can see yourself going down that same path of madness. You know. See, see, I'd never kill Bloodwing, so I can't agree with that. Like, I would kill the shit out of Roland. I would just fucking just. He did all of us a favor that day. Like, he shot Roland, and literally <laughs> the only person upset about it was Lilith. I was like, oh, Antina. oh no, Roland's dead. Well, Antina. yeah, Antina. yeah, well. Tina too, but you know I didn't have to feel bad about that until the salt on Dragon Keep. Like I, in in the game, I was like, whatever, you know, she'll she'll make real friends now with real personalities. I don't even think you, like once like you're done with the, like the uh, tiny Tina area, like I don't think she pops up again, um, in the game until the DLC. So like her being like sad with Roland isn't even a thing until. Um, yeah, the like, they establish that there's some sort of relationship between Tina and Roland, and, and you know, it's really, it's sweet, because you're like, oh, you know, Roland likes kids, and kids like Roland, but until the tiny Tina's assault on Dragon Keep, you don't really get the grasp that, oh, this, Roland meant everything to this kid, and now I feel like a bastard for going, yay, Roland's dead, I don't have to hear <laughs> that bullshit anymore. There's, um, stuff with Jack, like, when you get to the, uh, kind of the later parts um this is probably after roland dies i think like when you're in like the old F- F- firestone area where you get the echoes of um him from years ago with like a little kid angel and like you get some hints that like angel killed her her mom or a stepmom or whatever and jack is trying to deal with it he can't and, uh, yeah he can't like his thing is like well maybe i can use this power to 
do whatever and she like he hooks him up her up to this supercomputer and like she's like daddy no he's like you sit in the chair and i'm like geez like this is a character who just an hour or so ago was like pleading to you not to kill her but then you hear these echoes where he's just kind of a monster to this little girl yeah and that that's that's the thing (coughs) both are true to jack which is the which you know because he doesn't because (coughs) jack will tell you anything is the thing like that's something that you know and we can we can move on from from here to uh to the other games because or I, I this isn't my rodeo i'm taking over joey's show but <laughs> like let, let uh, hold on i'll go through the dlc real quick captain scarlet and her pirate booty okay mr torg's camp into carnage fantastic you sir hammerlock's the... big game hunt okay tiny yeah. Tina's salt and dragon keep fantastic there we Are go we... <laughs> no we have to talk about uh we have if we want if we're going to discuss any of the DLC in general, we have to talk about Tiny Tina's. We have to like of the of the four, I think that Tiny Tina's was my favorite. And it's uh, probably probably the one I would consider the must play DLC. Yeah, and it's it's fantastic. Like Mr. Torg's campaign of Carnage, I love because Mr. Torg himself is fantastic. Like I I have a habit of when especially when I'm playing you know a game for the first time. The first thing I do is try to pick out who the villain's going to be. Because, you know, someone in your party's going to betray you. Like, in any game I've ever played, I'm like, all right, I know which one of you's going to be the bastard. Like, I, I've actually uh, infuriated friends because I figured out not only who the bastard was, but who the, what the plot twist was going to be at the end of the game within hours of playing it. But uh, there, it, this, the moment in Mr. Torque's Campaign of Carnage where you meet up with... Uh, I can't remember the name of the character, but you know, in the end, like you just know he this is the guy that's gonna that's gonna screw you over. And Mr. Torg just getting on the communicator and being like, That guy's gonna betray the out of you like that <laughs> <laughs> to me, like that I was like, Yes, yes, thank you, sir. Thank you, mister. Can I call you Torg? Like it oh, just beautiful. And in, in in Sir Hammerlock's big game hunt there was like the payoff with Nakayama because that was like <laughs> That was the best boss battle ever. Yeah, like, after after that frustrating, like, bully mong bullshit, I was like, okay, now I have to fight another one? Because my game kept glitching out, and the health bar kept, re- like, just regenerating on that giant bully mong. Yeah, that was... And I was so frustrated, so by the time Nakayama comes walking out with these rocket launchers on his back, I'm like... Oh, no, crap. I can't handle this. And, and then, then he falls down. The and then admit <laughs> you probably admits and it's like, oh crap, not an. And it's like, ah, boom, 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 boom. And you see his health bar just go down a notch every time he hits the stairs. And you're like, they're really not do. They're not do. Oh my god, they're doing this. They've my actually favorite, done it. My favorite part. I I was in tears. I was laughing so hard because it didn't hit me. Because I was like, okay, well maybe it's just a joke. Until the loot started popping at him. <laughs> I beat the boss. So I've actually never played the DLC because I always thought it was one of those just like mini boss things that they, yeah, like that they put the out. But, yeah. And then I found out that uh, Takanama from the pre-sequel is actually from this DLC. And I was Nakayama. Like, oh, okay. Nakayama. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. Hey, I'm yeah, American. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> oh, you pull that back. Reel that back in. Reel that back Naki- in. So, uh, um, Nakayama is a special kind of crazy. Oh, like, see, Nakayama to me is, Nakayama is Tumblr to me. Like, yeah. if, if you think about Handsome Jack and Tumblr, it's Nakayama. Pretty and much. I, I mean I that in the most affectionate way possible. Like, that's the, the only way to to explain the complex relationship that Tumblr has with Handsome Jack. <laughs> well, it's not like... I wonder if that was a response to that somehow. It wouldn't surprise me one little bit. See, I don't think so, because when I played... Sir Hammerlock's big game hunt. Like, yeah, Handsome Jack was getting popular, but honestly, the the ta- the Borderlands fandom didn't really bust out there, or at least I didn't notice it. May- maybe I was too busy paying attention to Tron, but like, the Borderlands fandom didn't bust out until the pre-sequel and Tales from the Borderlands hit. When Tales from the Borderlands hit, I saw so many flower crowns that I thought that I had died. I was like, how did this happen? Where did this come from? No one knew about these characters ten minutes ago. 
Yeah, I mean, that's the way I kind of was. Like, I was enjoying Tales so much, I just looked up Borderlands on Tumblr, and I was like, man, there's a lot of fan art for this yeah. game. But and, what tip can we... I, I hate to be the one reel us in, but we still need to talk about the pre-sequel before we get to Tales. Yep. Yep. But, um, let's take a little break, Happy guys. Tales. <laughs> oh, let's take a little break. We've been recording for a yeah. while. And, uh, we'll start, start this up in a few minutes. All right, we're back, guys. Hello. Yay! We had a lovely, we had a um, lovely discussion while you were gone. <laughs> we talked a lot about Borderlands, um, and Joey had to reel us back in. <laughs> like, during the non-Borderlands talk. Um, we didn't really talk much about Tiny Tina and, uh, Attack on Dragon Keep, if you guys want. Yeah, we we need to finish up on that because Tiny Tina's Assault on Dragon Keep was that that was a love letter to. It felt like a personal love letter to me. Like, I think I think this was the reason why I wanted to play Borderlands too, because like I heard this DLC was really this good. This is probably this is. Uh, I've heard good things about Claptastic Voyage. I think this is this is the per, my personal favorite DLC in the entire series. Yeah, this is definitely the opus of the of the. Just uh, it's the Citizen Kane of of Borderlands DLC, um, especially like there's there's a scene like the overarching story is really good and I like a lot of the jokes they make, but there's a side quest uh, where Torg is a fake nerd guy, and I just except, was so except, delighted. Except he's not a fake nerd guy; he's just having his credentials called out. Exactly. Well, that's the thing. Like that, he he fell into. You know what happens to every geek girl ever is just you know. Oh, d- what what's this then? You know, like having again having their cred checked, and you know. So again, like he he fell into that whole you know fake nerd problem that was happening when this DLC came out, and it was just so on point. It was so very very with it that it it made it delighted me i was like yes they see it they know they know what's happening and uh i just i loved that but yeah like as i was saying before tiny oh. tina's assault on dragon keep also made me face the fact that yeah tiny tina was really upset that roland died and it really upset me i was really upset for her because he was a paperback of a character but like yeah. apparently it was a paper bag she liked Exactly. Yeah, like she was constructing this entire fantasy where Roland is alive and being a a hero to everyone as a, a coping mechanism because she couldn't really accept that she, that he was gone. Also, also we find out that T- Tina's diet is crumpets, lots and lots of crumpets. That was beautiful. And then they it, it wasn't like Lilith, like why? How are you still alive? Yeah, yeah and they, they tried to they, feed her salad. I think. No, they force feed her a salad. And she likes it, and she hates that fact that she likes it. It's be- she's so beautiful. And then the reason her reasoning is, and her reasoning is, it makes me more of an adult. And then Lilith rightfully points out, we are we are a bunch of we are a bunch of adults sitting around playing a game. Adulthood's whatever you want it to be. And then Tiana Tiny Tina was like, you got a point. Yeah, that was beautiful. That was beautiful. I also loved that she based all of the dwarves on Salvador. And they <laughs> called Salvador and like, hey, do you think this is messed up? And he was like, no, that's amazing. All right, bye. Like, that's, that's <laughs> a, he was, all, not only was he all right with it, he was extremely all right with it. But I think the real, like the real shining moment for that, for that entire, like I, I know I said I really like the fake, you know, geek guy side quest. Oh, but... what about that? What about the, uh, the critique on boob armor. That was beautiful too, but a game that stops for not not just for a for a single like five second joke, but a full forty five second span of laugh track for a fart joke. Yeah. I couldn't breathe. I couldn't breathe when they when when it came down to all of them laughing because Mordecai said fart. It. I mean, Tina just. Lost I was it. crying. I was crying. I, I need to replay this because I because I don't remember that. No, no. I I I knew God that day. Like I I truly like I I understood the universe as a whole. Whenever I heard a forty five second fart joke happen in one of my favorite games like that, oh, oh, that was just beautiful. Yeah. 
Borderlands is beautiful in its insanity. And, and it is. Like, there's... <laughs> Remember in the pre-sequel when he, he got that Oz kit that farted whenever he did a butt slam? <laughs> yeah. And, like, we just, we just, well, especially you, we just, like, we're laughing and laughing. And I was like, you know, it, it's okay to laugh at this. See, that's the thing, though. Like, oh, and it, it just... I, it was called the cathartic release, I believe. The cathartic Oz kit. <laughs> See, it's really good that I haven't gotten that one, because if I did... No one would ever want to play with me again. Like, there's a, a running joke. You would be using like a level twelve Oz kit at the end of the game. I would be. <laughs> like, like why don't why don't you switch it? No, actually, funnily enough, there is a there is a level a uh, level eleven uh, or twelve legendary kit you can get that you if you're playing with someone else you want to keep on during the rest of the game. See, for me, mm-hmm. if they made a legendary fart Oz kit, I would I'd have that engraved on my tombstone. I don't care what they named it. Like, they could name it anything they wanted, and I would just be so happy. But, because, like... So... Sorry, no, no, I, I... I want to create a full illustration on how I feel about fart jokes. I... There's a running joke between my friends and I that they will always know if I'm the one who farted. Now, there's, like, 12 of us, so farts just happen. You can't get 12 people in a room together for three hours and expect somebody... Expect no one to ever fart. And someone will look at me and go, Jess, was that you? And I will look them right in the eye and straight face just go, no, you know I'd be laughing right now. Like, you know that I would laugh at my own fart. So the fact that there are farts in my favorite video game, like, <laughs> oh, oh, no, I would I would actually go into cardiac arrest if I got that fart Oz kit. Like, yeah, I would probably... it, oh, and here's the best part. It drops from a character called poop deck see i i killed poop deck and i didn't get that that's probably it's probably the same yeah but it, it's it it only drops during the mission ah because see i don't i may have not gotten that mission because i was like ha ha poop deck dead and then nothing so it's um and so at the end of end of tiny tina um Real and they go, hey let's go let, let's all blow up that space station and uh, not, you, you never do. At least, at least the players like those players. Yeah, don't. but at the end, at the very end, when Bloodwing came oh, flying, wait, 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 yeah. wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Joey's trying so hard. Hold on. Wait, Bless wait, your heart, wait. because we're and no. Uh, since it sounds like we're wrapping up, Tiny Tina. Did did you cheer when Bloodwing flew in at the end of Tiny that Tina? That was so sweet. That was so sweet. Oh, that's right. Yeah. That was like. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank, thank you for doing that. There's a, a similar moment in um, the pre-sequel DLC um, where two characters are reunited that can never be re- reunited in real life. And I was like, oh, that's that's sweet. Um, also, at the end of Borderlands 2, you awaken a giant monster. It's really easy, but at least the story was pretty satisfying. Well, yeah, <laughs> uh, the first game was the, Destro- the Vault of the Destroyer. The second game is the vault of the warrior. Warrior. The pre-sequel is the vault of. Oh, did the vault have a name? The vault of knowledge. The vault of. Don't fucking do this. <laughs> yeah. The vault of we're gonna blow up the moon. Yeah, so let's talk about the pre-sequel. Um, I remember when this was announced. It was around the time where like all these other series, even though they had their you know their trilogy. Like, all of a sudden, a fourth game was coming out. Like, you had a, a Gears of War 4. You had a God of War 4. And, like, and then, like, as the new consoles were coming out, like, the, pre, the, the pre-sequel the came out, like, on the old consoles. So, I don't think this one got a lot of attention from, like, non-Borderlands fans. Um, because people probably saw it as, like, oh, this is, like, a last-minute cash grab or something like that. This was, a lot in a lot of ways, an improvement on Borderlands 2. And in other ways, a few steps back. So this was made by um, 2K Australia, which, which sadly got shut down after um, they made their big story DLC. So uh, the pre-sequel doesn't have as much uh, story DLC as either of the other games. Yeah, but I think the uh, story is a bit more cohesive than 2. Yeah so, yeah, so this game relies heavily on its story and characters, like a lot more than even 2 did. And um, 
uh, like as the name implies, it's a it's a it takes place between Borderlands one and two, and it takes place on the the moon. Elpis. Elpis. Mm -hmm. Which I found out Elpis is um like I, I, I forget exactly what it was, but the word Elpis is connected to Pandora's box somehow in like the old mythologies. So it's it's like the last sin or whatever to oh. come out of the Pandora's box. Uh. Elpis. So it's a, heard... it's hope. Oh. It's the Elpis means hope. Okay. Gotcha. I don't know that stuff. So all the playable characters in this game, at least most of them, were um, NPCs and bad guys from previous games. So you have Nisha, who was um, the, the the sheriff of Lynchwood, which you didn't even mention, which was an entire side quest area, like an optional side quest area, which um, had a pretty neat story yeah. around there, it. Let's see, there was who else? there was uh, ah there was Athena. The best character ever. Well, one of the best characters ever. Let's be honest. So yeah, this... I'm here. Okay. Um, he had Athena, who was the character in the uh, General Knox. He had um, Will Wilhelm, which was a boss in two. Which I wasn't aware that he was a, a cyborg guy. I thought he was just a you robot. You have Athena, and then the characters that aren't Athena is basically what I'm hearing. Like, there's <laughs> Athena, and then... Other characters, I guess. Yeah, the, the uh, clap trap, which is called fla uh, frag trap in this one. Which is um, he actually he's actually pretty awesome in this game. What? Yeah, his like his like ultimate ability is like just doing something completely random, right? Well, it's not completely random. It it does factor in what's going on around you, but it it's it can be beneficial or. It can strap you in a rubber ducky and bounce you around. Yeah, it's terrifying. Like, James absolutely loved playing. Again, this is, that's my boyfriend. Uh, did I mention I have a boyfriend? No, I, James played he... Claptrap, and that was his favorite part, was just constantly making sure I had a bad time. <laughs> I mean, like, I, I can imagine, because I'm like, I might play it as a... The uh, Baroness, what's her name? Aur um, Aurelia. Yeah. Aurelia. 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 Yeah. Ar and like most Baroness, of the time, the ultimates Aurelia, when you do them. Hammerlock. It's like most of the time when you do like an ultimate or like whatever, like uh, you know it's going to like help you out like when you're fighting a badass enemy or it's going to clear out a room. I imagine with like with like a claptrap, it's like. It's like you don't know if it's going to help at all, you know? Yeah, yeah, like, I, he he would constantly just, we'd start playing, and he goes, guess who's going to get up? And then he'd start, he'd use his action skill, like, and we'd all be so upset because almost every single time he used his action skill, now I know it's random, and I know it's true random, because I expelled, like, all of my bullets, I just wasted everything, like, six times in a row, and that could only happen if it was true random. <laughs> um. I think the character does heal himself to full when you use it, so at least there's that. Yeah, he heals full health. Yeah, yeah, like, and I love, and... I love that they have that. Especially, I love that they make sure that that's who you like. They they give you like seven warnings, and that to it's me is three. Amazing. It's three warnings. It it's the equivalent of seven to me, Dustin. I don't I don't count. But they I basically just... go, you know, this is Clapjap, right? And then it goes, are you? Sh you are you really sure you want to play as claptrap? So is like is it that like a joke or is he actually harder to play because you don't know what his ultimate is actually going to do? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Don't know. It's a toss up. Yeah, because see, like I I did, I play I only played him briefly. I, I completed. You, you were there. You were there when I completed my first playthrough. Uh, really wanted yeah. to play the doppelganger. Uh, love playing I, the doppelganger. I wish I could have played the doppelganger, but you know, <clears throat> I um, just had the base game. Well, I promise you, you'd be in for a treat. It's just, it's so fun, especially because Damian Clark, the guy who voices Handsome Jack, hearing him do this character, it's like, it, it's it's obviously someone who, you know, is trying to be Handsome Jack, it's what he's being paid to do, but it's someone who's so, like, before not the game Jack. even begins. No, he's just completely fucking over it. He does not want to do this anymore. He didn't want to do it when it started. And, you know, there he is. And it's just 
it's so fun to listen to these, you know, to his little quips, to himself, to people around him. It's, it was a lot of fun to play as that character. And he just, it's a fun character and it's easy to play for the most part, like up until that last boss, which again, thank you, Joey, for jumping in because <laughs> I was getting to a point where I was like, I don't want to play this game anymore. But I, uh, I, I, I'm ne- I didn't, I never had, I, that last boss was, a, that last boss was probably the last best boss in the series. You know, uh, we'll get to that. Um, yeah, like, it, it, imagine that voice actor. It's like playing someone who sounds like Handsome Jack, but isn't Handsome Jack and doesn't like being Handsome Jack, but still the, the same voice actor. It sounds like, it sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah, you know? yeah, I know. And Damian Clark is, just from listening to interviews with him, he was actually at a convention here recently, but I didn't go and I regret it every day. Uh, he, he's just, he's so good at being Jack that... Hearing him, like hear, hearing him play Tim is the name of the uh, the other Jack. He's he can't legally say that, but that's his name. He, uh, his name rhymes with Jimothy. Yep, yep, Jimothy Lawrence. And uh, but but hearing hearing him play that is just it's it's so fantastic because he I've listened to him just kind of be Jack for so long that it was it was almost jarring to know that he could have another take on that character like he and and for it to be so genuinely a different character even though it's the same exact voice like it's oh he's so good he's so good well like in tales like in tales like like the jack character is kind of a different character he's a little more he's still kind of the crazy guy but he's also kind of mellow yeah well he's an ai but oh and and oh when we get to tales you're gonna hear about it oh yeah as if you haven't been hearing about it from me oh no no i can talk about tales too there's a also, a fun part in Borderlands 2 is when you um, get the voice disguiser to sound like Jack, and you hear um, Damian Clark uh, do all the lines you've been hearing the entire game, like when you kill stuff, but as Jack. You yeah, know? he's just so versatile. That was like fun. it's, I, yeah. I've only seen a couple of other things that he's done voices for, uh, but holy crap, like that dude is just he's he's my favorite voice actor right and now. I'm kind of sad that we probably won't be doing hearing too much from him in Borderlands anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's, he just... Like, he, he... Especially in the pre-sequel, he gets to a point where he just embodies that voice so much. He just, you know, he's just perfected it. And, um... We're not going to talk a lot about the pre-sequel, I don't think, but, like, there's 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 a point where you, you, you see the transition. Like, I noticed this a lot more when I replayed it, where he was just kind of regular old guy Jack trying to be a nice guy, and then he trans... And they- transitions into like the crazy jack who wants to kill yeah. everyone and you can tell it in his voice because he starts being like oh you guys are so crazy i'm just gonna kill you all of you like he starts being that guy a lot more yeah. and like it's it, it's really subtle that you don't really notice it happening until all of a sudden he's that jack from borderlands and then too, everyone know? around him's like well and athena's like oh i'm not liking where this is going yeah yeah it was really like and and I love the pre sequel for that. Like, it didn't it didn't have as strong a story as Borderlands two, but what it gave us was enough to illustrate again. And that's something that uh, we, I mentioned it during our break for a, an example of just fantastic you know character background given in a you know a supplemental game uh, is Crisis Core because I felt like Crisis Core for Final Fantasy seven was just the ultimate thing that someone should look to for answers when it came to Final Fantasy VII because you look at a character like Sephiroth and you have nothing to go with. You're just like, okay, so he was a great soldier, but then he got upset for some reason. Like, he saw a monster and got mad. Oops. But I felt the same way with the pre-sequel and Handsome Jack. And Handsome Jack was already, like, by the time Borderlands 2 was over, Handsome Jack had been laid out for me on a silver platter, and I was like, yes! Yeah, he was already Yeah, so character. then for them to add that, you know, like... Okay, guys, just so we're clear, he was always kind of a douchebag. He wasn't as much of a douchebag, maybe, but, like, yeah. he was always a douchebag. Let's just put that in. Let's just throw that out there, show you guys what how Jack got here. And uh, I really enjoyed that. I really enjoyed getting to play on his side, especially because at first you really did. You got that sense of, you know, like, oh, he's just a guy trying to run things. That's just what he's trying to do. But by the time, you know, you blew up that eye... You could tell that he was completely unhinged. Like the the scene with the, the rails uh, had the rails had gone off his brain. Yeah, and 
he and and the the worst part was is that everyone else around him had realized it but he hadn't like the mm. characters real his own like the people he'd hired had realized you know obviously by then but the jacket especially checked. by the end of the, the yeah the jacket checked out yeah he was he was not he was not the guy that he seemed to be and well i mean nisha nisha was all happy about that well, yeah, Nisha is a completely, and and I actually do. I like Nisha a lot. I was surprised at how much I like Nisha because I didn't like her at all in two. I was like, Ugh. and anyone who kills a puppy to me is no, but I liked her quite a bit in in the pre sequel because kind of like Jack, you know, she just she is what she is. And like even with Nisha with the dog thing, you find some echoes where she tells a story about how she had this dog when she was little that got basically space rabies. Mm-hmm. And it uh, attacked her, and now she's, like, t- terrified of dogs. So it kind of gives a little bit of context to all that. Um, yeah, and, like, I liked how the characters in this one um, interacted with the NPCs as they were, like, giving out orders and all yeah, that. Yeah, the fact so... that there was banter, and not only banter between the character and the NPCs, but the character and other characters. Like, there were times, because our, our audio wasn't working during that last boss fight, the only way I knew you were still okay was because Tim was like, yeah, you know, Nisha's bringing the law, and I'm like, yes, thank <laughs> yeah. God, because if, if if he lost now, we'd, if we'd have to start over. Yeah, it, like, it was cool, because every time Dustin uses his um, Athena shield, uh, my character was like, everyone behind Athena, everybody! <laughs> and like... And I, and I you know, I, I never really paid attention to that, but I, I thought it was cool how, shield. like, the characters were, were interacting with yeah. each other when they and I would use that there was a friendship, a yeah, like, there was some sort of camaraderie, yeah. it's not yeah. just... And, um, and, like, it kind of changes the way you view some parts, because I played as Nisha the first time, and she is, like, all into everything that's happening. She, like, she thinks it's hilarious. I believe, I believe but the, like, one of the loading screens is, does Nisha, does, does, the, does Nisha like pain? Giving or receiving? The answer is yes. <laughs> and, like, uh, I think uh, Wilhelm's kind of the same way. But, like, playing as Athena, like, she, like, there um, comes a point where she's like, oh, I'm getting paid for this, I'm getting paid for this. But you can tell she has, like, reservations about what she's and doing. By the, and by, right around the time the eye blows up, she starts to realize that I ain't getting paid, she ain't getting paid way enough yeah. for this. You know, like the Baroness is kind of in the middle, like she takes glee and like causing all this mayhem, but then there comes a point where she's like, Oh, this is a little bit too much, don't you think? And you know? at, at that point you start realizing that wow, even she, even Aurelia's starting to go mm-hmm. that, that things have gone off gone off kilter just a bit. Well some of the dialogue with uh Timothy, like Jack, well like, what was his dialogue like? Oh, he there was one one of the big ones that someone pointed out to me, and I I still I really like it, because uh, they had pointed out to me before I had finished the game. But you know that there's a moment right before you enter the vault where one of the uh, one of the soldiers comes out and he's wounded and he just you know says please spare me, and Jack's like oh shoot it shoot it shoot it like he just wants you to kill this guy, and it's optional you don't have to kill him and if you don't kill him, Tim will actually say I'm not you Jack. And, like, you kind of, like, in that moment, you know that he's completely defied the fact that he is, unfortunately, you know, his doppelganger. But there are just moments throughout the game that it's it's so clear he's like, oh, God, why am I here? But <laughs> another, like, one of my favorite lines, is, again, near the end of the game, is, uh, like, Tim is acknowledging that Jack is crazy. He's like, yeah, you know, I don't really want to do this anymore, but you're my ride, so... I guess <laughs> we'll go. Like he didn't, he didn't want to do a lot of the stuff near the end of the game. He just wanted nothing to do with it. But he, at this point, has no no option. Like he just has to do it. His his agency has long since been gone. Yeah, like there's no part of him that wanted to be Jack in the first place, and now like he's he he doesn't even want to be on the moon. Like he he says several times that he freaking hates the moon and he just wants to leave. Makes you wonder what happened to. Jimothy. Well, they, the... they have. I, I, I wonder a lot about that. I could talk for days about what happened to Jimothy, but like the fact that you know he just 
there was no part of him that went, you know what? I'm going to be handsome Jack Stoppelganger. He said, oh my God, I've got student loans I need to pay. And this job looks like it pays a lot, so I'll do it. And, and, then, he, and then he realizes, I'm still not getting paid enough. Yep, exactly. None of them. No one there, except maybe Nisha, is getting paid enough. And Anisha would uh, um, probably done it for free. Yeah. Like one of the first thing Jack says to Nisha is like, "Whoa, uh, you're you're pretty hot. <laughs> Can I have your number?" Yeah, and it's. Uh... So for the most, there are some returning characters like um, like Moxie and uh, Lilith and Roland, but for the most part, um, there's a whole new cast here. We have uh, Janie Springs, who is kind of the uh, scooter replacement. She's a fun character, but she's definitely like writes kids stories about. Her uh, a girlfriend being eaten. Oh, we don't actually know monsters. who it is. We don't know if it's her girlfriend. I... Yeah, yeah, it was. It was her partner. No, we ne- they never actually explicitly say. But yeah. Oh, I, okay, we... well, I, I thought it was. And um, we got uh, Nurse Nina, who I'm pretty sure is Marcus's mom, I think. What? I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but I know for sure, uh, Dustin, I know you were just saying that they never explicitly say, but in a lot of sources, like it, I believe in, if you look at the uh, the cosplay reference guide, at least, they say that it's definitely her ex-girlfriend, like her girlfriend was eaten. Like that's yeah. it. So it yeah. was her girlfriend. They don't say that, you know, it wasn't, you know, so. I thought they made it pretty clear in the game. Yeah, her girlfriend. Her... Yeah. Um, that's why she has a big scar on her belly. Um. Nurse Nina, like, I'm pretty sure is Marcus's mom. Like, hear her on the phone talking to, to someone, and it kind of... Impl- I thought it was her mother she was talking to. Oh, maybe. I don't know. In my head canon. Your, your head canon. She, she's a Marcus's, Marcus's I, I mom. I like that you threw that out there. Like, well, yeah, you know what? It's my head canon. It's, it's my, my head, head canon. Ah, or, or, uh, you've been on um, Tumblr too much. Don't get... There's also um, Hillbilly Moxie, which... Oh, nice. I loved I loved that suit on her. Like if she'd been yeah. on that in that in the entire game, like Moxie would, you know. And, and it, that's unfair because her her other design is fantastic, and she looks fu- wonderful in it. But like I think I don't know, something... Moxie looks better. Well, I think like once I got that like just normal person Moxie is when I started liking the character. Yeah, I was more. like, oh my god, this is exactly where I need you to be. You know, because she's still awesome. Like there's everything about her is still awesome. You know, like I, mean... I don't. And, I mean, she completely gets one over on Jack. Like that—that that was for me. That was the big turning. I was like, Jesus, Moxie, that was good. Like that slow clap for you. Slow clap. Oh, uh, we have Pickle. Oh, uh, Pickle. Um, I quite like Pickle. Like I—I yeah. I thought he was adorable. I thought that he was... is a—he is the epitome of a scamp. He, yes. Um, in, in the uh. Claptrap DLC, you, you find some echoes that I guess Claptrap overheard or whatever, but uh, you find out that the reason he was raiding these ships wasn't necessarily to find like loot to sell, but he was looking for his parents who were on the who who got uh, killed on the ship, and, like, and he wanted to find their bodies and stuff and give them a proper proper uh, burial. I thought that was kind of sweet. Jesus pickle, I didn't come here for feeling. Very cool. I know, yeah. right? And, um, Jesus, Pickle, why you did you even his... read me this story? <laughs> uh, then we have uh, Gladstone, who was a Hyperion scientist guy, or engineer Yeah, guy. poor Gladstone. He had the coolest damn design of any of their people, and then... Jack yep. went and ruined it. Yep. Uh, we got Felicity, who was a AI that... Was the basis of Holy the Holy shit, that made me so uncomfortable. I've I, never I, been I, so... I, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Didn't even Nisha get kind of eh about that? I don't. I, I don't remember. But yeah, like, I, I, oh I don't think. I don't think anyone was comfortable. I don't think any of the characters were comfortable with how that Jack went. Jack was fine with it. Jack, Jack was good. Was fine. Jack was good, but pretty much even I didn't really even go like I'm not happy with this. In, in the um Hollow Dome DLC, like like uh, during the battles um. Athena is telling Gage and Axum about, like, the story, um, just as, like, retelling it, and, um, they get to the part with the loader, with the, uh, with, like, making the loader bots, and she says, yeah, we had to rewrite this military AI to make the loader bots, and Gage is like, I would never, ever, ever, ever do that to Deathbot, or Death, 
trap. Yeah. Like, that's horrible. And she goes, yeah, it's not one of my prouder moments. Yeah, like, I remember, like, that. I, I had to, like, I saved the game and just walked away for a minute. And that's, again, this is another example of the Borderlands series being really good at putting you in an uncomfortable spot and kind of, like, making you think about that. The fact that, you know, I, like, I came into this game to jump around on a moon and, you know, be... <laughs> Blow stuff up. Yeah, I just wanted to be Handsome Jack, and then I started playing this game, and I was like, oh, no. I don't think I want to be Handsome Jack anymore. <laughs> and before that, you find out she was, I don't know what she was, she was like a holographic stripper for this pervert guy, or whatever. Well, yeah, no, he had reprogrammed her to be, uh, like, his girlfriend, and that's... His waifu. Yeah. Yeah. The term his, they used. His, his waifu is basically the way that that goes. But, uh, but yeah, no, it was just terrible. That oh that was but after that though like I noticed after after the Felicity thing like the game again kind of had a weaker like second half but it really had nothing else to do at that point like yeah you know we're gonna stop Jack for a second but and uh, and then I did like the variety oh. um, that it gave us in the environments because like you were, like if the entire game was the moon <coughs> like. But Sorry. That would have been kind of like the first oh, game where it's like, some, oh, it's just the same there environment. There is actually something I'd like to mention. If you're playing okay. uh, True Vault Hunter, the game becomes you, you telling the story to uh, Tiny Tina. So you have Tiny really? Tina popping in every now and then giving commentary on the story. Oh, God, play that Wait, for real? For real. Huh. So it's like a different... It's like a different um, dialogue yeah. and stuff? Yeah, it's... Well, it's mostly the same dialogue, but then Tiny Tina pops in and kind of break, does, like, she wants her, okay, the very first thing you hear is Tiny Tina saying, tell me the story, but make it harder. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> That's nice little That's amazing. thing. So, like, are you replaying it, like, you see some different stuff. Um, I forget what I was talking and about, so. If, if you uh, play, if you don't want to play for long, at least play it until the moon shot. You will laugh your ass off. I'm not even joking. Oh, okay. And uh, Nakayama comes back as the ultimate Jack fanboy when you get to the Hyperion. Again, station. the Tumblr or Helios. The Tumblr character is here. Sorry, hold on. <coughs> Sorry, I had to cough again. But yeah, Nakayama is just glorious in his creepiness. <laughs> Put some flowers by the elevator, then he'll notice me. Oh, just so... And then, like, the, uh, the computer, like, burns the flowers because it's a fire hazard. Um, do, do, do. um, yeah, so, overall, um, I thought I kind of liked it more than Borderlands 2 from, like, a gameplay perspective because there was kind of more variety in, plus... like, being able to oh, jump yeah, so Oh, yeah, the double high. jump. Oh, man, I'm, that's the one thing I miss going <laughs> back to Borderlands yeah. 2 is the double jump. Like, the, um... Like like the, the, like the story is actually kind of more involved than Borderlands Two, but I I felt kind of more involved like attached to the Borderlands Two story, um, but like I like the the, the little character moments. Oh, and plus there's like a, a Zarpadon, which I think is a good villain. Zerpa Derpadon. <laughs> Zerpadon! Oh god, I can't take that name seriously. It's just so fun to say. And then there was that uh, quest right at the end where you basically tell her daughter to get off the moon. Or did y'all not? You don't. Or am I the only person to remember that quest? No, we did that. We we per, we postponed the end of the game because we just because we just had to do the quest. What? Um, one thing the pre sequel did a lot better than the other ones is um having some really challenging boss fights. Oh yeah, the boss fights were a blast. And uh, the last boss for us, Dustin, wasn't too hard because we were kind of not over leveled, but you know we were at the right yeah, level and all that. I was Athena. Um, yeah, it was. But I, when I played that s solo, it was like oh, it must have been like one o'clock in the morning when I was playing that. And I was like, I cannot do this. This is way too hard. And especially like if you don't have a co-op partner, like if you die, you have to yeah. start over. And, um, 
Uh, it was like it was it was really intense that last boss fight and, and like Jess, you were saying you couldn't even really do any yeah, of it. Yeah, like there was <laughs> when you played. I was I, I was like, am I just not good at this game? Like, am I am I bad at games? Is that why? No, no, it's just hard. Of like, course. A... Do you, did you even see like the second phase when you? What when we were fighting? Yeah. When like you were playing by yourself? No, no, like I got like a bit into there and then like, nope. <laughs> of course. Uh, what Joey forgets to mention is that, for some reason or another, I had the luckiest run at getting legendaries during this run. I mean, I ha I got both legendaries from Zarpedon. The shield and the uh, laser rifle. I I got mm. none of those. I mo Mostly, I just had Joey giving me the silent treatment, and I was just happy it was over. <laughs> no, it wasn't, this wasn't... No, like my mic wasn't working. He wasn't being mean. Or 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 uh or Steam just didn't have the mic option open for me. I was trying to talk. He, he probably could have heard me like going, Oh really? Oh jeez. You know what though? That's that's me. one thing that I will say that's been true for the entire Borderlands franchise. The first time I play co op with anybody, it doesn't matter how many times I've played co op before, there's always like a thirty minute wrestle with the audio. Like I don't know what it is about voice chat. It may just be Steam. I think that's why but I, like I think that's why I turned it off in Steam because the first time we went into like a co op game. Like it started messing up. I was like, "Oh, I'm turning you off," because <laughs> we're using we're using curse, uh, voice. curse or whatever. Um, yeah, like the build up to the final boss is kind of the best out of the three games because um, you have to fight through the vault. They actually have to you know fight through the vault instead of just kind of arriving there. And um, the last boss is pretty impressive. Has multiple phases and uh, can be pretty challenging. Um, but like the actual ending ending's all right. Like like Jack finds out about the warrior and uh, all the characters kind of go their own separate ways in some in some I feel, cases. And you, I actually feel bad for Claptrap. <laughs> oh, you haven't felt bad for Claptrap yet. Oh, uh, because don't, uh, don't spoil it for me. Okay, since either, neither of you have played this, I won't really get into the story. But um, Claptrap the Clap Claptastic Voyage is the only story DLC to come out. Because uh, sadly the studio shut down um, soon thereafter, um, and the the plot is is that Claptrap has like Hyperion's secrets inside of him because that's like the old CEO like hit him in there, and so you have to um, digitize yourself and go into a simulation of Jack of uh, Claptrap's um, memories, and um, you know there's a lot of like internet humor in there like cyberspace stuff and. Uh, you get to relive some of Claptrap's memories from various points in his life. Um, one part actually takes place on, in a Overlook from the second okay. game. Like you find out what happens there, like why the why the town's in such a, a sorry state. Huh. Um, and, and even though this takes place after the ending and like where everyone kind of left, they kind of had to just say, "Yeah, we all came back for this other job," even though we hate Jack. <laughs> I was actually wondering like what Claptrap's like dialogue was like during all this because you're inside his own brain you know um and this last boss oh my god this was even harder than the um than the guardian was in the uh in the main game i still kind of uh, i guess i i guess i can't really talk about it much but like it's one of those bosses where you just die in two seconds because a missile hit yeah. you and like uh... there's nothing you can do about it and so you have to pray that there's like, because they put like all these little mini enemies around the stage. I think just so you can get a last hit, uh, t t to revive yourself. Yeah, that's what my strategy was. And whenever we were playing the end of the pre sequel, I was just like, okay, get all of these almost dead and just let them do what else they're gonna do <laughs> yeah. until it's time for you to. Well, also I think that's actually part of the design for some of that. But at this at this point, it was actually kind of too much. Um, I actually kind of kind of cheated a little bit because I was running around and I, I, like I saw the boss was like stuck in a corner and like couldn't hit me because I had a, a wall in front of me but I can still peek around it and him not notice me so I literally took off most of his health bar not even moving and I felt bad but I was like you know I have to do this <laughs> it's the only way I'm making it out so yeah and then like I thought that was it and guess what he, he has this, he has another phase which is even harder <laughs> Um, 
It's, not, it's actually a pretty cool final boss, but I guess I can't tell you guys. Alright. And um, the end of the clap, clap, trastic, clap, clap, trap, tastic. Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Joey. Clap, tastic voyage. Go. Um, actually, kind of starts at the beginning of Borderlands Two when clap trap is, you know, in the pile of dead clap traps and all that yeah. stuff, and it's kind of neat. Um. Let's talk about the best game in the Borderlands series. Tales from the uh, Borderlands. Tales from the Borderlands. I wouldn't call it the best, but it's pretty... I, I would call I it mean... the best. I, I would call it like it's a very different game, obviously, than the main games. But it, it's the one that um, gave a lot of just personality and life to the like before. Like like the characters in Borderlands were good. But this added, like, more dimensions to the actual world. There's actually, and the way that I've sold this game to people, because I absolutely love Tales from the Borderlands, but what I like to tell people is that Tales from the Borderlands is, like, an Always Sunny episode happening in Borderlands. So, like, if you've ever watched Always Sunny in Philadelphia, just, and and are interested in Borderlands, just play Tales from the Borderlands, because it's basically the same thing. And you probably uh, even stick the music at the beginning, and then... (laughs) Yeah, no, for real, and and in fact, this is such an accurate thing to say about this game, that there is an entire Tumblr that does nothing but apply Always Sunny quotes to Tales from the Borderlands screenshots, <laughs> and it's amazing. Like, Always Sunny on Pandora is my favorite Tumblr blog, and always will be. It's just so good. And, but this is another, that, and we've mentioned this before, Tales from the Borderlands was a game that was endlessly funny, and also just gut wrenching. Yeah, I mm-hmm. I'm going I'm gonna go ahead and mention this. I cried. I oh. mean I was a weeping mess. I no no at the end of and spoilers for anyone who hasn't played this through so far, but I have a great Pax Prime related story. Uh so chapter three came out right before Pax Prime and I I, I played it immediately. I was but I remember saying, Hey Guys, you know, it would be really cool if we, uh, no, it was chapter four. I'm sorry, chapter four. Uh, so why don't we, uh, why don't, why don't we sit down and play this game together? And we'll be starting on chapter four, but you'll like it. You know, it's a funny game. And then within like 10 <laughs> minutes, Scooter was dead. And I was and... like, this is not a fun game anymore. <laughs> I'm not having a, I'm not having a fun time anymore. <laughs> I came here to have a good time. And honestly, I'm feeling so attacked right now. <laughs> like that was. Oh. Yeah, so for those who don't know, um, Tales from the Borderlands is a, a Telltale adventure game. They made the uh, Walking Dead, you know, like uh, The Wolf Among Us, and, and those types I of games. I think this is this and is again, their best game. I'm not I'm, uh, out of. This is the best Telltale game I've played. Um, I would put this on par with like Wolf Among Us, like and like probably better for me just on a personal level because I'm such a fan of Borderlands. Um. But again, I think when it was announced, people were like, "What an event- a Borderlands adventure?" No, game. see, Handsome Jack was at but... the end of that trailer, and I was like, "Praise Jesus! Oh, God's <laughs> real! God's real!" Like I was so happy, and I had no idea what I was stepping <clears throat> into, and mm. you know that. But that game, like, I thought I was gonna go into it for more, you know, for for more Borderlands Two character shenanigans, and by the time I was done, like, the day that Episode Five came out, I I was. I was having such a hard time concentrating at work that I considered leaving early, like because I just needed to uh, to know I needed to know what was what happened to my poor precious characters, because by the end of episode four, these characters that I you know was like the first the first episode came out and I was like wow I really like some of these characters it looks like it's gonna be a good yeah, game. this is really this is really funny. But, it's like it's, it's, it's really funny and clever, but yeah, these characters really grow yeah, on you. Yeah, yeah, I, and I think you know, especially when you have characters like Vaughn and Gordis, <laughs> it's oh, Gordis, oh my oh. god, I just want to hug Gordis. I'm not even kidding. That poor precious child, like every she every not, line, she does from not the moment. <laughs> she does not belong in border. She is too good for Pandora. You know, th- th- that precious cinnamon roll meme goes around a lot, you know, too good for this world, too pure, but there is no character that embodies that more than Gordis. <laughs> like, in episode 5, when she says, I, I want to live on a nice planet, I'm like, you deserve to live on a nice <laughs> planet. But really, though, like, every single character in this game managed to get to me, except maybe Vasquez, but, you know, like, he was kind of just the, you know, like, the mid-boss. 
but I mean, well, of course, I like Vasquez because Patrick Warburton. I mean, <laughs> no, I I have a friend who does a fantastic Patrick Warburton impression. Like, it's unfortunate how good it is. And we started playing this game, and he heard Vasquez, and just the entire dinner after that was just him doing Vasquez quotes and me laughing hysterically. <laughs> So. <clears throat> it's, impre- it's impressive too because most of the characters in the game are like original characters I mean, yeah <laughs> and usually that doesn't work out you know like it just doesn't like the, I, I it actually it actually got kind of like upset a little bit when like it's like oh a Borderlands 2 character shows up <laughs> it's like they, they took the easy yeah like out. oops looks like we had to go into the pool but like but yeah Actually, didn't happen. No, no, like, really, they they only had, like, Zero showed up, and honestly, I thought the the relationship between Zero and Reese was just amazing. Like, I I don't know who you guys picked in your squad simulator at the end, but, like, me, I I, I went immediately with Zero. Zero. I mean, actually, doesn't he have, like, a, like, actually, yeah, about half the people picked him. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, a lot of people did. I picked a, a Janie and a and oh, Athena. Oh, same here. Janie, Athena, and Zero. I picked Athena, Zero, and God, and August. I picked August because I quite yeah, like August. Yeah, me too. I think. And that was another character. Like again, I came into this character going, okay, I might like some of these. By the time episode five was over, hold on, I'm good. Sneeze! Oh, excuse me. That was. Gesundheit. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but no, by the time, by the time episode five was over i absolutely loved august and i remember whenever he first showed up going like oh i don't know about this guy but then by the end of it after he'd lost valerie and just like just oh just good character but none of those characters grew anywhere near as much as our lord and savior obi-vaughn kenobi like vaughn was just He's he's like he's like oddly ripped. Yeah, it's kind of weird. It, see, like that was the thing. Like, he's just he's such. I thought you I thought you were going to talk about Loaderbot. No, well, listen, Loaderbot. We knew from the beginning it was too good for any of us. But like Vaughn, you get Vaughn in your party. Like Vaughn comes up and he's this mousy little dude who, yeah, like he showed up and he had some, you know, he was muscular. And by the time the second episode hit, they were like, yeah, no, this is just me. But whenever he was gone for like two episodes, I was like. Are we not talking about Vaughn anymore? Where is Vaughn? Is Vaughn okay? Well, wasn't wasn't there an episode three if you like if you choose um Fiona like at the end of episode two? Um, Vaughn is actually out of commission for most yeah, of the yeah, episode. Yeah, yeah, I trusted three. Fiona at the end of two, which for me was a that they oh, and that was another thing. The way that they paced each of these episodes really left me like uneasy. I remember at the end of the first one, I was like, okay, that was fun. Let's see where this goes. There was like a four month gap between the first episode. Yeah, and, the and but I remember at the end of the first episode being like kind of excited, like okay, cool, you know, like yeah, and Jack's here now, so we're gonna see how this goes. And then by the end of the second episode, it was like. I, I had to think about like I made the choice to trust Fiona, but I remember feeling like that stomach turning, like oh, oh am I going to make the right choice here? Feeling, and that 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 stuck with me, and that was something that was true of the entire game. There are a lot of choices you make that just stick with you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like most Telltale games, like it doesn't really affect the story too much about the choices you make. Like in, in that case, it does kind of change the first part of the episode and, three. And apparently, if you pick. If you pick Fiona, you actually miss out on a character. Yeah, you miss out on Dumpy, the little robot, uh, which I did. I missed out on Dumpy through my first playthrough just because. And if you, yeah, if you trust Jack, like you get a um, like your uh, little Echo Eye thing actually changes, so like it like like Jack is um, giving the descriptions yep, the of all the stuff. The Jackpedia. <laughs> yeah, so so next time I play that game, I'm definitely kind of doing and that. And what's funny though is that like that's something that. I, I had a really, really hard... But again, it was just the way that they characterized Jack so well that by the time the end of episode two hit, I was physically uncomfortable with the idea of letting Jack in. Like, I was like, no, I can't... No way! Like, I cannot do that to this character. Well, it's kind of, I was trying to, like, roleplay a little bit because Reese is, like, a Jack fanboy. But, even, but... Um, but, 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 like, I knew... Like... Jack from the other game. Mm-hmm. So, like, at first, like, I had Reese, um, 
kind of just, oh yeah, Jack, you're awesome. But then like, but but then like when you want to give control, I was like, oh, but I know who Jack really is. And even by that point, Reese was kind of figuring out too, that like Jack isn't really the hero he thought he was. Um, but definitely next time I'm gonna let him in. And oh my God, episode four, episode four is just it te- it wrench it just rips out your guts and shows it to you and like you wanted to laugh laugh at this yeah like they had some guts killing off like probably one of the most popular like characters in the okay series. so now I, I do have to tell this story because they uh that episode four came out shortly before pax prime and at the gearbox panel at pax prime they kind of you know they didn't want to spoil it for people so they were just kind of talking about you know like hey this is how we justified letting telltale do that but it, Mikey Newman comes out and goes, hey, so did you guys play episode four? And the entire crowd was quiet. <laughs> just, like, so sad. And uh, and it was so funny because they're like, yeah, you know, we're going to have a we're going to have a, a live playthrough later on tonight. We're going to have a party and you know do a live playthrough. And I remember leaning over to the girl sitting next to me and going, that's not going to be a party. It's going to be a lot of really sad people. That's, like, that's, was... that's going to be a. At least make it awake. Yeah, like it was. Oh, I, I just. Ugh. But it it was amazing how, just absolutely like like someone like like an actual person had died, and they were all you know talking about it. Because even the way that Gearbox spoke about the character was very somber, very you know. Well, you know, we decided to do it this way. We trusted Telltale to do this to you know, to expand the narrative to you know really you know get the loss of of the game like the, just to, to really really you know expand on the game and i i was just like the entire time like just give me scooter back just give me scooter back take... <laughs> I'll, I'll take i'll take an ai scooter at this point listen if if an ai scooter showed up in any of the catch a ride stations my heart would just absolutely break like it would fall out of me and but you no would just like, be done like, I truly and honestly, whenever I went into this game, expected, you know, to have oh, a kind of oh, fun... Oh, oh, hold on. I just remembered... I remember earlier I told you Joey was evil. Oh, son of a bitch. What did Joey do? I didn't no. spoil it. After I had gotten through playing... After I told him I would gotten through playing Episode 4, I had gone back and played Borderlands 2. He has the audacity to message me this. No matter how much you play Borderlands 2, Scooter won't be coming back. Oh my god, <laughs> Joey. That's that's an actual, like, sin. Like, that's that's not something you just take back. That is... Holy crap, dude. What the hell? What did they I ever was, do to you? I, I just... I didn't even... I, all responded was, You are evil. I didn't mean it in a mean yeah, way. Yeah, you no, did. You, you didn't mean it in a mean way. No. It... <laughs> no, like, like in all honesty, like when that happened in the game, I was like, are they really gonna do that? Are they? They're, oh my god! If Scooter. You didn't kiss the shit out of Scooter. Like, uh, I hugged well, him. What's what? I gave. I hugged him. He deserved a kiss. He deserved so much of op- of step C. Like that's just what he, like, step three was absolutely everything he deserved. That poor precious space cowboy. Oh, um. Is that what you um, put on the? No, I put catch a ride like any other red blooded American would. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think most people would that. Percent. Oh, Ninety-seven percent. Poor sweet gentle scooter. Scooter was, you know, Fiona said it, Scooter was the best one of any of us, and he was, like, just... Well, it's like one of those things where you probably never really realize that about Scooter until, like, the moment where he uh, sacrificed himself, because, like, none of the other characters would probably do that. Scooter's just that kind of guy. I'm getting and, um... sad all over again. <laughs> it's like... We kind of talked about it, like, in the previous ones, but, but Scooter was, just, was kind of just a hillbilly joke for parts of the yeah. game. Um, but, like, it really, though, like, at the end of it, and especially, you know, in that final act, you're like, holy shit, this guy has never done anything but, like, 
be decent to the like. I, yeah, he killed a uh, he killed Mick Zafford's son, but L- like Lucky. Yeah, he killed Lucky, but like the Zaffords are bastards. Yeah, he he of. killed yeah he killed Lucky because of what happened with his mom. Like he didn't just kill the guy because he felt like killing him. Like Scooter is easily the best or was the best person on Pandora. Like without without. Well, maybe except, well now Va- well no well human being because Gordis like it, we can't count the robots because Loderbot and Gordis were better than Pandora as a whole. But yeah. like now that Scooter's gone, I think Vaughn is gonna have to take his place as best person on Pandora because I swear to God, when I saw Vaughn in episode five, like every time I see him, my heart gets warm. I'm just like, look at you. You grew so much. You did so much, and we didn't even see you do it. But you just did it. And it was just so, like, that to me, ha- all of the stuff happening with Reese, because holy, holy crap. <laughs> like, yeah. I remember, I listen to this. I made a joke to a friend, not two nights before episode five came out, saying, why don't we just take the damn eye out of Reese? Oh, <laughs> oh, no. did I, did I did... eat my words? I ate my words. <laughs> Did you crush the eye or did you keep it? I crushed the shit out of that eye. I'm not oh, going to keep that thing. I kept it. And you want to know why? That's the worst punishment. I could Killing him would have been easy. Now he just gets to sit there and stew on uh, stew in himself. See, see, I just can't. I, I couldn't. I, was, I knew that the game was ending, but I couldn't trust Jack. Like, uh, there was nothing in me that said, you know what? If I just take this eye out, he can't hurt me anymore. So I said, no, you crush that. He does not deserve to be here. But in Jack's final moments, like, I I felt feelings towards that character. And I was obsessed with Handsome Jack. Like, since, you know, since Borderlands 2 came out, obsessed with Handsome Jack. And there was just something about those final moments where a lot of his character just really, like, clicked. Like, you went, oh, sh- that's, this makes sense. Because... You know, when Reese is sitting there, and of course Telltale had to do that, because how, like, it, it's not a Telltale game until you're dismembering yourself. Yeah. So, you know, Reese has ripped out his arm, <laughs> and Jack's like, whatever, I can still kill you. I'll wait. You know, but the second that Reese makes it clear that he will destroy Jack, Jack's on his knees. Like, Jack cannot handle the idea of being alone. And No, he can't handle going back to nothing. Exactly. No, he can't. And, and nothing would mean him being alone. Would mean him not having... Because think about it. Like, the handsome Jack that you've had in the last three games was someone who was more or less surrounded by people who were either telling him he was great or that he was not. And he knew how to handle that. He knew how to handle other people. But he did not know how to handle himself. Exactly. He had no idea what to do with himself. He he was so deep in his own illusion that the idea of being alone with himself and really thinking about the shit that he's done. Joey, I'm just so... I I need to bake you a cake because I've done nothing but swear lately. Uh, I mean, it's a Borderlands (laughs) podcast. There's... Yeah. I'll do it for you. (laughs) But no, I'm just going to refer to Dustin every time it's time to, to swear. But no, it's the amount no, I mean, of stuff No, I mean, I'll make a cake. Oh. Go ahead, continue. <laughs> yeah, he's like, come on, come on. You're, you're on. Uh, but the amount, the, the, the fact that he's so deep in his, own, in his own emotion, in his own lies, that he can't fathom the idea of being alone with his, with his own thoughts was to me like that was just such a perfect way to round out this character. This wasn't someone that they, you know, redeemed at the end or, oh, I was just doing mm-hmm. it for Reese, who, let me tell you, <clears throat> you know, they never say it, but if Reese isn't Jack's son, whatever, like, yeah, sure, okay, I believe you, sure. But like. There, there, there's, um, some things, sorry, but there's like some things with Jack, too, um, where like the AI Jack is kind of like the pre sequel Jack. It's like before all that. <clears throat> You know, I guess he still has his face mask on, but like he doesn't know that Angel's dead. He doesn't know that his uh, girlfriend's dead, and he finds all that stuff out. And that's kind of another thing. It's like he realizes that everyone he cares about is killed because of kind of him. 
Like, he kind of realizes that he kind of got And what's them funny killed. is he realizes it, but he doesn't tell that. Like, you can tell that he's realized that because when he says that, you know, oh, they betrayed me, like, he's not saying it like, you know, the kind of, you know, pissed off Jack usually would. Like, you know, no, to hell with these guys. They think they can live without me. I'll kill them. It's it's very, you know, like, he's acknowledging they're dead, but he's not hmm. he's not taking any sort of guilt for it. He's just kind of like, he feels bad that it happened, and he realizes he has nothing, but he's not taking any of the guilt by saying that they betrayed him. They, they disappointed him by dying, by being yeah. mortal. And, like, and like, like that's just kind of has to him just being alone in the universe because, you know, everyone he ever thought he cared about is... is exactly. Everyone, everyone, he, everyone he put his faith and trust in, in his mind, either betrayed him or died. Or both. Yeah, and see, that's the thing, though. Like, you know, he, he calls it trust. He calls it faith. But really, if anything, you know... If anything was shown to us, it's in Tales from the Borderlands. It's just how how Jack and, you know, like, yeah, it's an AI, but this is how the way that Jack and Reese's relationship played out was likely how he treated anyone he ever quote unquote cared about. It wasn't him caring. It wasn't him genuinely worrying about this person. It was him using this person as a means to an end. And never expecting to give them anything more than his presence for it. Yeah, like, wasn't it like he told them, Reese, like, yeah, like, you'll be the head of Hyperion. It'll be awesome. And then, like, oh, yeah, this is pretty good. I'm going to make a difference. It's like, yeah, I'm going to tear out your bones and put myself, put my robot self into your yeah, body. Yeah, no, that went from zero to screwed up way, way too fast. Like, that I was, was like, like it, that was like whiplash. Yeah, like, I remember going, okay, so obviously, like, the first thing I did, because I, I took over Hyperion, like, I was like, this is what Reese wanted. Oh, me, me too, yeah, yeah. this is what Reese wanted. Like, yeah, I didn't, I had him trust Fiona, but of course he would, but if Jack is offering him Hyperion on a silver platter, this is what he worked for in the beginning, he might as well yeah. take it. So I took it, and so the first thing I did was order a pizza, because... Absolutely, yeah, sweet buddy. God. I sweet wanted God. that. I told, I, the first thing... That was the first thing he said he'd do is order lunch, and by God, he got that pizza. See, it was already half eaten. See, for me, like, I didn't even care at that point. I just said, you know what? Reese deserves a pizza at this point. I have seen this kid <clears throat> go through hell, and I just want to see him enjoy this pizza. And I did. And then the game went to hell. Like, right after that, it was like, anyway, so I'm going to shove a robot up your ass. And it's like, <laughs> what? <laughs> no, 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 hold on. You're going to do what? <laughs> <laughs> it, it, I remember I had a friend, my friend Ari had, hadn't played Tales from the Borderlands and she played it, you know, over the course of a week and she was streaming it and I remember tuning in for episode 5, I was home in time to watch her play episode 5 and just I was just ready because I saw what happened to me happen to her, just watching this entire game go to hell in a handbasket and then losing Loderbot and then just watching yourself fall with, you know, Helios crashing around you. Just, holy crap, that was the heaviest mm. way to open a final chapter for a game. Uh, I could, ugh. I mean, and, it, it, and it's a final chapter for a lot of things. It's it's pretty much the end of the Hyperion arc. And Hyperion in general. Yeah, and it's, oh my god. And then, you know, like, the... What what's great though is they kept it going. Like it didn't just stay. Like it didn't stay. It didn't do it, what I've said. You know, most video games do before they they have a a good strong you know middle like climax is really strong. But then like everything you know up leading to that final boss fight is very kind of eh. this. I have never had so much fun finishing a game. Yeah. That that fight, the Gordis fight had me in tears. I was so excited. I was so happy. It's the only time I've ever enjoyed a quick time event. I'm not even kidding. It was beautiful. I've never had so much fun with with the ending of a game. Like, that... It, it, was, it was nice, too, because, like, episode five, um, most of the episodes were, like, five um, acts or chapters, but episode five went on to six. 
And, like, you can just tell they spent a lot of time making sure this that uh, climax was just uh, satisfying and fun, and it had a lot of character moments. Did you notice that, all that one stuff. of the first... They actually had, like, the loot colors and the items? That was a nice mm-hmm. touch. Yeah, that was that was beautiful whenever the boss... Whenever the traveler dropped all those items, but, like... Everything, everything in those final moments, everything with all of the characters, like everything came together. And that was something like a lot of people have been very upset and, oh, oh, Tumblr will just get upset about anything at this point. Um, oh, it's Tumblr. Yeah, like really, like they, uh, let me, let me, let me tell you a thing. So I don't, I don't know why this was a problem, but a lot of people were upset that you couldn't pair Reese with Vaughn. And one, Vaughn wasn't there for you know, like, two and a half episodes so but also that's not, that's not their relationship it's it's not but also like they that was when i started hearing people say things like oh gearbox is homophobic or oh telltale is homophobic while you know athena's taking a call from her girlfriend pretending she's totally not doing a vault hunt like that's like the and, oh. and oh my god Janie and athena are just the cutest couple Oh my god, they're beautiful. But like a lot of people complained like, "Oh, you know, I my 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 choices didn't really mean anything at the end." But it didn't feel like any of the choices that I'd made like like I had to think a lot about the choices I made after after I played that game, or at least up until episode 4 and watching Reese tear his eye out. I was like, "Why would I do this to this character? Why would I spend money on this game? <laughs> I'm only making him suffer." But like you're also making him grow. Yeah, and it, by the end of that game, even with... Because I felt like the scene with Sasha at the end with her almost dying and then being okay. Like, that felt... Ugh, like, I, I that was the only kind of, like, ugh, like you could have just gone one way or the other. Yeah, like, that one I thought, it's like, oh, they kind of rolled their way out of that one. Yeah, like, are <laughs> well, we going to I mean, do it? A way... we not? Well, there is actually a way you can avoid that. Like, if you forget the item or you throw it away, she just dies. Oh, oh really? I didn't know that. See, I didn't know any of that either, so. Yeah, I, I could be wrong, but I'm almost positive there's, you can not, you can, that item cannot happen. Yeah, I'm going to have to um, try that out. What do, you, to... what do you guys, even though I don't want that character oh. to die, um, but like, oh, what do you guys think of, um, well, not just Sasha's relationship with Reese, but also with her sister, Fiona. Like, I thought those character interactions were kind of the best part of the game. I really mind. liked Sasha. Like, for me, Sasha... And that was another thing. Like, people were getting all up in arms about Reese and Vaughn, and I'm like, bros, Sasha is one of the best characters in the, in the series, period. She's capable, she's strong, and she's never, you know, like, had a relationship that she had a choice in, if you think about it. Like, look at her relationship with August. That wasn't one that she went, oh, I like this yeah. guy. He's cute. I'm going to have a relationship with him. You know, but you're seeing this giant techno spaghetti trying to woo this badass desert chick. And, you know, like, it's, for me, I was also just like, Oh, Sasha, you precious ugh. little self. I was like, for Reese, I was like, oh, you precious little snowflake. I hope you, I hope you succeed. Like, really, and what what I liked about her was that I didn't have to hope for her to succeed. I knew she would. I was more worried that Reese was going to trip her ass up on the way. Like, that, yeah. like it wasn't going to be that Sasha failed to do something. It was going to be that Reese fucked up. And you know what? That's what happened. Like, that's exactly what happened. And it's, but, but anyway, like, I felt well, like. There was this one scene that was like, they were doing a, like a walk scene. And then, like, Reese was looking at Sasha, and Sasha was looking at Reese, and then Fiona, Fiona just kind of slowly just kinda, leans in. <laughs> you know, just comes into, that, just comes into frame with this look like, what the f- do you think you're doing? Yeah, so the, the, this, this series had a lot of funny and that moments. And that was one of them. And, and, and a lot of laugh out loud moments, but that one thing was one of the most hilarious <laughs> things I've ever seen. And, like, I thought it was great, and then. They look back and Scooter's <laughs> like, this guy looks over. like, yay! <laughs> that, all <laughs> like, to this beautiful power jam. Like, I just could not yeah. believe how much I loved that scene. Like, that, it, it sucked that I immediately felt terrible afterwards, but, <laughs> but no, like... I mean, 
Like, like the of all the opening sequences and all the episodes were like some of the most fun things ever. Oh, serious. Ever. The musical well, choices like, um, in this game. I guess in five was more like like somber and all that stuff, but but, but the other ones like all the music choices and all. Yeah, all and that's that. another thing. Like um, the Borderlands, like the actual like soundtrack that they picked. You know, like the heavy song for Borderlands Two, or you know the songs that they use in Tales from the Borderlands. And then the heavy song. Always. In the, in the pre sequel. Yeah, it's that, that that song actually was is actually one of my favorite picks. Well, was, that and the one for episode five, of Tales. Yeah, there, and, but it was all so good. Like it was just all so good. And I'm sorry, I went on a tangent about Sasha, but I didn't actually get you know onto <laughs> Sasha. Sasha was easily, as far as like the the female characters go in Borderlands, she didn't really have anything to bring to the table, but she brought so much to the table. You know what I mean? Like she was. She mm-hmm. was clearly, at, like, with her sister, she was a con artist. She had, you know, certain capabilities. She knew a lot about guns, but there, was, there wasn't there was anything about her. She wasn't a siren. That was another thing. I love that none of the girls in this in this game were sirens because they, they focus, a, a lot of people, especially, you know, like, the fan community focuses too much on making new siren characters. There's only 11 to begin with. And we've and, seen, what, one, two, three, four, five, maybe? Yeah, we... I think we've seen four or five. I can't remember for sure. I can't. I can't. Well, well Steel was one. Steel was one. There was Steel, Lilith, uh, Angel, Maya, Maya, Lilith, Angel. I don't think Zarbadon was the same. No, no, she think... wasn't. She wasn't. So I think there's only four. I feel like we're um... forgetting someone. But either way, like the fact that Sasha had no, you know, special abilities. She wasn't highly trained. She was just a kid off the streets. And yeah, like Fiona, but Fiona had a gun, and then yeah, Sasha had guns too. But like there was, those two were so capable. Like I never for a moment went into a, a situation with Sasha and Fiona and went, oh my god, they're not going to be able to do this. Like I, I always felt like these characters, oh. if I get separated from them, are going to be capable of handling themselves. Okay. And I loved that. Actually, I hate to. There's only six sirens. Is it that there's six total? Because I thought for sure, in some mythos, they say that there's 11 total. No, I'm looking right at... I think Dustin's right. I think there's only, like, a very limited... There's number. Lilith. I don't know. Where the hell I get 11 from, then? Well, there's hmm. Lilith, Maya, Angel, uh, Commandant Steel, and then there's a, another one we've seen called in a, one of the comics called Asha. Well, yeah, but I... Well, no... which, which might or not... Which might or might yeah. not be canon. So, we... But there's only six. And they... Kind of, I think when one dies, another one is born. That kind of situation. Those, those, those like an avatar yeah, thing. yes. From seeing this, yeah, it says six. I, I could have sworn I read eleven somewhere, but it could have been from one of the comics. Like, because I remember them saying, you know, like only this many amount of sirens can exist at one time, and I was like, okay, that's an odd well, number to pick. Only two there can be: a master and an apprentice. Uh... Um, what uh, did you guys guess? The uh, identity of the stranger. I really point? wanted that to be Jimothy. I wanted that so uh, bad I, to be Tim. Well, I could. There were a couple of people I thought it could be, but it, I was wrong. I knew it wasn't going to be anyone that like wasn't in the in like the tail games. So I, it being uh, Timothy was probably pretty far fetched. Yeah, I, I, but see, I was just kind of hoping for that because can you imagine the app? Like, I, I just really wanted to see Reese's reaction to seeing. To seeing Tim, like, because he's they, he, he'd probably shoot on sight. Tim, pr- Tim probably has to wear a mask because he's probably shoot on sight. Oh, totally. Uh, but like, you know, he's got these kids bound. Like, they, it's not like he has to worry about anything with them. They don't have guns. They're not, you know, they're not going to hurt him. So like, just the idea of you know, Reese having to deal with this AI in his head and then seeing its face on an actual physical being that he can punch in the damn face, like. Ugh, that and that that would have been beautiful, but that's not what I we think, got. But it was still good what we got. Oh, what we got was. Fantastic. I also think that. Also think that um, DLC came out kind of too late for them to really do anything with them. Yeah. Um, in like the tale story. True, true. Uh, like it's. But yeah, no, I, I felt like in the end the way that they brought Loderbot back in and that you know he wanted to bring Gordis back and all of that that was really sweet and just the way that that game ended a lot of people want a season two like that and I would love to see it more Tales from the Borderlands games but like I want to see it, Fiona I want to see Fiona in Borderlands three I want to yeah. see her what go ahead 
Oh, no, I was just um, going to say, see, I, I don't know about that. Like, I kind of like where they left it. I felt like the ending to that game, I didn't go, no, I need more answers. I just went, that was beautiful. This game is beautiful. I thought the ending was yeah, perfect. Yeah, the ending was yeah, like, so the, satisfying. They, like, it's technically a cliffhanger, and I really hope that they can do a season two. Um, but, like, I thought the ending was just perfect, how they just kind of vanished together. Like, after all, all that they went to. And then the ending song for episode five is legitimately one of my favorite songs of the past, I don't know how long. Like, I, I love it. Um, it's called, um, oh, I forget the name of it. That's so much I yeah, like. Yeah, you it. like it so <laughs> much you don't know the name. But, like, I, I thought that song just fit the entire series and its conclusion so well. Um, it's called My uh, My Silver Lining. Um, it's, it's just fantastic. And they have some really cool, like, the Borderlands art you know, over the credits like they do. Like, you just remembering the, like, the journey of these um, characters took. And, uh... It's incredible. Like, that, that that was just, that, oh, that game was so good. Uh, also, I might need to wrap us up because I gotta go to bed soon. <laughs> yeah, it is. We, yeah, it's gonna, it's yeah, we, late. yeah, we have gone on for about three hours, so I think we've... So we might want to um... make this a two-parter. Like we might want to, might consider going back and actually just diving into each of the games because it sounded like we had a ton to say. Um, let's talk briefly about what we want Borderlands Three to be. Um, do you want it just kind of more of the same, or do you want it to switch it up? Like maybe even be kind of like a multiplayer thing, or like an MMO type thing. Maybe like a Destiny is a little bit. See. They were working on a Borderlands MMO, and that got canceled. That was going to be a Chinese MMO, and it, it didn't... I guess it wasn't working out because they canceled it. But, uh, so, like, I... Well, most of those most of those games are kind of, like, kind of free-to-play versions of just the regular old Yeah, game. it's shovelware, um, basically. But, um, yeah. but, no, for me, I know we're going to have... Like, it, it's a Borderlands game. We can't have a Borderlands game without a siren, it seems. Yeah. If I get another siren... And I've actually, I, I I may have shown you the drawings that I've done for this Joey, just because I'm just obsessed with the idea. I want a brawler siren. I don't want, you know, like a wayfish little, you know, like, because all of the sirens are beautiful, but, like, I want one that is just going to punch you in the damn face. You want, what? You, you want, you want yes. Brick. But My siren's siren. name is Brick, and she's the prettiest. Like, that's, to me, that's my favorite like, idea. It, basically, you want a siren that looks like she's maybe eating a sandwich or a steak. Ever. See, we can get. A, I I could talk all day about my siren theories and metabolisms and all that other stuff. Like I, you, you that's a dangerous path to walk down. Oh, no, I not. no, I literally just want a siren that will, and and not like Lilith punching handsome Jack in the face, like you know, dramatic thing. Like her first instinct is not to you know face through a wall or you know hold that you was, in the air. Well, she just wants pretty, to punch you. Well, that was a pretty dang good punch though. No, that was beautiful. That was beautiful. But no, like a brawler siren is something I'd want to see in Borderlands 3. Uh, I would kind of like to see us go to a different planet because I feel like Pandora, Handsome Jack, like all, all of that's kind of, you know, like we, we've done what we can with those those areas. It's time to leave Pandora. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but also... I mean, they, I mean, they even had that map of, of like the galaxies with the vaults everywhere. So I think even they want Exactly. It. Like, you know, exactly, and I think the the last thing, like, I know that we're going to see some, you know, like, there's obviously going to be echoes about Handsome Jack, there's going to, and, and, you know, I, I don't mean echoes, like, the actual, like, the communicators, but just, like, we're going to hear about Handsome Jack in the, in the next game, so we, of course we are, but I'd like to see us move on to a new villain, like, I really want to mm -hmm. see us move on. But if, how do you, how do you talk? Handsome Jack. Well, I think uh, it's not well, so much that you uh, they need to top him; they just need to match it. I don't care if they top Handsome Jack. Like I don't need to have you know a, a villain that will make me think Handsome Jack wasn't perfect. You can't, you can't top perfect. Like that character was fantastic. But if they can give me a villain that at least makes me feel half the way that Handsome Jack did, I'll be satisfied. So. And uh, Gearbox knows that um, they just can't go back to the. Pandora, Handsome Jack, well, like, I know they're, that like, that well is that well was well. They're gonna take their time to make sure Borderlands three, or at least I hope that um, that is like something new and unique and special while still retaining what people like about the series. But like, I, I do wonder if they're gonna do like you know like four classes, you know, like like pick your 
pick your characters and, and go, or, or like I wonder if it is going to be kind of like a open-ended MMO type thing where like you see a bunch of vault hunters running around. Because I think with the popularity of a game like Destiny, it might um, shift their uh, perspective a little bit about what a well, uh, about what um, type of game it can be. Um, but we'll see. It's, it's it's still a few years away. Like I probably won't even hear about it for a couple more years. Um, they have that new game, uh, a Battleborn, coming out, which doesn't really interest me that much. Oh, Battleborn. But yes, but we'll see. Have you that. played the beta at all? Uh, no. You know, uh, my computer it, would explode. Is it is it is it open beta? Can you just like download? Uh, you have to sign up. I don't know if the signups are still open. I signed up for it some time ago. The 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 times that I've played it, it's actually been very fun. It's not quite as a. It, it's kind of like. It, it has a lot of the Borderlands flavor in it. Like, you can tell that the people who made Borderlands made this game, and that's a good thing. Like, yeah. it's not like, oh, this is just Borderlands with different crap on it. It's it's a different game. You, you can tell it's a, it's a MOBA, but it's... The way that they're playing through it is fantastic. And the way that they wrote it from, like, the, the scenario that we were allowed to play, hilarious. Like, I, the, I, I played that scenario a good, you know, for a good six hours. And it's only, like, a like maybe 40 minute long scenario. It's not a very long scenario. It's meant to be played in spurts, you know, with, with random players. Um, but every bit of the writing was fantastic. The battles were challenging. Like it, it felt good. It felt good. I don't know why they had to, so, they had to move it out for some reason. And I don't know why, but hopefully. So like, it, it's not like a campaign game, like Borderlands is. It's kind of more self-contained. Um, scripted events like i know it has like a multiplayer aspect but there also is like a campaign in it where it kind of takes you through a that's story. what it seems to be like again we only got to play the one scenario but it's there is some sort of story element in there you know you still have the things you have to do you know like collect this many points and do this sort of thing and you know y your character does this and you're like all of the characters are different it's you can you can tell like again you can see the moba aspects in it yeah like you're leveling up Per match, yeah. right? Like you, you, like you basically level up from one to max each match, and then you reset in the yeah. next one. Yeah, right? yeah. So there's a lot of, again. There's yeah. a lot of those MOBA aspects in there, but it's, it's fun. I I had a lot of fun playing it. So, I I I'm looking forward to Battleborn. I. Yeah, just for whatever reason, like I look at that, then I look at like Overwatch by a Blizzard, and like I'm I'm more drawn to Overwatch for whatever reason, even though I like how Borderlands Because was. you've played Warcraft for a hundred years. Like you just... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because I'm such a... Blizzard yeah, like, they, they have your money. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Joey got me... Well, Joey and another guy got me hooked on Heroes of the Storm, and I've just been playing the ever-loving crap out of that game. Like, seriously, I, I, I'm rather much enjoy... I'd rather much enjoy it. Hmm. Uh, they also announced a Borderlands movie is being planned, um... We know nothing about it, really. I mean, they just announced that they're teaming up with Lion Gate to make it. Yeah, and the uh, the producers behind it also did the first Iron Man movie. So. Uh, I think with the with like the success of like Mad Max, like Fury Road. Don't you I mean think, um, Don't you mean push. Furiosa Road featuring Mad Max? He's, he's, I guess yeah. you're not wrong. <laughs> you're not wrong. Um. Like, I wonder if it's just going to be, like, I wonder if they'll incorporate stuff from, like, both the first two Borderlands. Because, like, if you just do the first game, I don't think there's enough um, meat there to make a compelling movie. But if you add, like, Handsome Jack and Hyperion into the mix. So, yeah, you can't really do that game without Handsome Jack. Or, like, you can't do that movie without Handsome Jack. I mean, you could try, but really, it's, you'd be trying really hard. <laughs> like, people would come into that expecting a particular thing. I think they can kind of mix the two games' stories, like, mix them up a little bit, um, and just have Handsome Jack from the very beginning, and kind of just do most of the thing Borderlands 2 did, but kind of have it in the context of what the first game was. Yeah. So, um, let's see about that, and, uh, so on a scale of 1 to 10, what do you guys like Borderlands? You like, you guys like Borderlands? I don't think, I don't think bit. we can give, I don't think Jess can give a number. 
Uh, the number that I want to say would take hours to say. Uh, pi. We would have pi, to. We, we would have to start using. She would have to start using notation. Yeah, like I, I can I get subscript on this? Like, how do I say subscript? Um, I'm going to hmm. say it. I'm going to say at least uh, an eight. There are games I like more, but I mean. Not, I don't know but, why. Well. <laughs> well, I was definitely some. Pleasantly you surprised about you, you don't know the, about uh, my Metroid addiction. <laughs> I, I was very unpleasantly surprised about like the uh, the turnaround the series had after I was kind of underwhelmed by the first game, um, and then complete you know 180 from the next one, and kind of made me enjoy the first game more in, in like retrospect. Um, it's one of those games where like a few years ago it was all about Mass Effect, it, like. Like way back when, it was all about Legend of Zelda and like the uh, the uh, Jack and Daxter series, but now it's like all about Mass Effect. I, I mean, um, it's all about a uh, Borderlands, you know. Like in my mind, like this is this is the game that I'm just into right now. It's like the series I'm into. Yeah. So, all right, guys. Um, thank you for joining us, Jess. Nice to have thank you back. Thank you. It was nice to talk about yeah. Borderlands for three hours. And I'm sure you could talk about it for three more. Uh, three years, I think, would be a better better judge of time. Like, I, I'm I'm literally in several friends' phones under Borderlands. I don't have a name, just Borderlands. <laughs> you know, we'll definitely um, do our True Vault Hunter mode of uh, Borderlands Two sometime yes. in the future. Yes, please, because I I can't. Do you have to continue your character, or can you, you have a new to continue character? your character? Okay, because I kind of want to try another. Another well, character, but I guess I have to stick well, no, with uh, it's not the, Meyer or Gage. All you gotta do is, uh, I mean, it don't take that much time to just go through the game just not doing the side quests. That's what I'm doing. Hmm. Too bad he can't play as Claptrap in um, Borderlands 2. Don't you oh, mean if that? only. Oh, if only. Well, anyways, guys, um, it's been a blast. Go play some Borderlands. Oh, and if you oh, and yes, if you haven't, go play Undertale too. That's another good game. I can't go three hours without hearing about this damn game. We'll talk about it later. He's, he's randomly mentioned Undertale. Oh, oh, I could. What about okay? Go play Axiom Verge. There's a game no one mentions. No, God, no. Ja I've been watching James play that. That is fantastic. Like that game looks amazing. All right. All right, for real, I'm going to shut up now and uh, play Borderlands. You guys go play Borderlands. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go think about all of my handsome Jack feelings. And your, what about scooter feelings? My my scooter feelings died with scooter. All right. It's, mo it's mostly just us, like, the sound of silence playing in, in slowly, like, just, like, really, really low in an empty room. Like, that's when I think of Scooter. Like, that's all I hear is just, hello, darkness, my old friend. <laughs> like, it's, it's, it's painful. And then a, an occasional, get her, and an occasional, catch her ass. Did you really almost get her done, Scooter? Like, yeah. that's, wow. <laughs> Both. One of my favorite moments in Borderlands 2 is when, um, when that city... You know, rises from oh, the ground. It's gonna be one of them moments. And, and Scooter just goes, "Catch a rat!" Oh my God, Scooter was too good for this world. <laughs> Truly, he was. All right, no, if we keep going, we're just gonna keep going. All right, goodbye. Okay, bye guys. See you next time. Bye everyone. <laughs>